viewers along Sports South and all of their people that have joined them here today. Sam Smith along with Ben Outward and Statesboro. We're at homecoming for Georgia Southern. East Tennessee clad in the white jerseys have the football second down after a gain of four yards in the play. Second and, uh, well, actually right at five. And this is Ryan back to throw for his first trip of the day. He's throwing deep, intended for Beatty, catches it. Does he have it on the sideline? They say no, it's out of bounds. And quickly, Ben, up, they go to those two fine receivers. And that's what East Tennessee State does best. Roll out, roll out, throw the ball up in the air to Beatty or Johnson. Well, Beatty and Johnson will be joining the quarterback, Greg Ryan, in that backfield. And you can see the running backs of Dixon and Edwards, two very good ones. They don't throw to that tight end, Fon Cecil, all that much. In the middle for East Tennessee, as far as the bulk up front, look for one man in particular. Number 65 is Mike Fredenberg. He's a transfer, and he is in there now at 6'5", 300 pounds, and plays that right guard spot. That's a load. He can move at 300 pounds also, Sam. He can run pretty well. Third down again, just over five needed as Ryan goes to throw again. He throws to Beatty, makes the catch, but he may not have had enough for the first down as he's really well up. And a fine hit coming out of the secondary that time as it's short on the first down. And T.D. Tanner out of Atlanta. And McNair High put the hit right on Beatty just as he caught that football. Good play for the, for the uh, pressure coming up from the defensive secondary from the linebackers to keep him short of the first down, Sam. Fourth down and one. They elect to kick the football away. Both of these clubs possess some outstanding kickers. Corey Collins will be back to kick. You see his numbers, 37-yard average. But he's kicking to a very dangerous man. Standing back there is Dexter Dawson, who creeps in towards his own 40-yard line. The left-footer Collins gets a beauty out of there, and it backs Dalton all the way back to his 28-yard line. Quickly, East Tennessee and special teams cover the football well, and it'll be Georgia Southern's first opportunity to have the football, and they'll take over as they go here on homecoming afternoon in Statesboro against East Tennessee, our Southern Conference Game of the Week on Sports South. First play from the line of scrimmage by Georgia Southern after a 44-yard punt off the toe of Collins, and the young uh, fine freshman quarterback uh, Kenny Robinson handing off to Chad Holmes, who started this year as a third-team fullback, but came on with two back-to-back -back career highs. Last week, getting 98. The previous week against Western Carolina had 79-yard rushing, and he is their main fullback now. Tyrone Stevens got hurt, which gave Chad the opportunity to come in and play, and Tim Stiers was telling me that he is much faster at, at fullback than the other guys have been playing, there, including Roderick Russell. Really kind of adds another dimension. There's the pitch coming wide. They try to get... Chris right in the open field, and they got him at midfield. Makes the cutback, and the backside pursuit will finally get him. In the secondary, Jeff Horton is one of the top tacklers, number 46 for East Tennessee, caught the fleet-footed right, who comes into this game with just a shade under 300 yards rushing, but you can see how versatile he is coming from that wing-back slot. This is what we were talking about a little bit earlier. Kenny Robinson really learning how to run this flex-bone offense, and in particular, the quarterback to the slot-back pitch. Here goes Chris Wright up the side running this, run the option really perfectly, making a couple of folks miss and get some great yards on the play. 20 yards on the carry, first down and 10 yards to go for the Eagles. It's time to get to the first back through, and Holmes is in the secondary again as the offensive line up in front of them are making some holes, and they're doing the job. Behind the freshman quarterback, Kenny Robinson, we mentioned Holmes and Wright are the running backs. Also, Marlo Wortham is in there as well. Harris and Dawson, they don't throw a lot to Harris, but they do a lot to Dawson, and he's a good one. The front line is anchored by the three men in the middle, Cushing, Stevens, and Farrell, their third-year starting seniors, and they're good ones, along with Jamie Glover, who also returns as a starter from last year. Good look at Kenny Robinson. Redshirt freshman, kind of grew up cutting his teeth on the defense of Marshall some five weeks ago. Going to turn the corner the half time there, and will knock down after the yard fight as there's no gain on the fight gonna bring up a second down and 10 yards to go Kenny, Kenny Robinson just taking the pitch not really having to having to put the ball keeps and just tucks up does the safe thing with the ball second down 10 yards to go one thing about Georgia Southern is you see Dawson spread to one side and they get Harris outside of him they can spread the field and they throw as a little shovel pass on the inside and that's right he gets an opening at the 25 spins away from the 20 and down to about a 12 yard line what a nice move by Chris Wright a little invention there of a little shovel pass by Kenny Robinson 
we're get, Georgia Southern is going to be able to take advantage of, of the Buccaneers' very aggressive defensive line coming up either by traps or by doing things like this shovel pass to get them to overcommit. Kenny Robinson steps back and fakes the pass, gives a shovel pass up to Chris Wright, and he just does the rest of it with his own natural athletic ability. Some great blocking by the offensive line, though, I will say that. One of the things they're really trying to do is make uh, James Russell, the man who is one of the tops in the conference, really commit himself, and that time he did, and they shovel inside of him. Robinson down the line of scrimmage on his first down. The pitch to the outside comes. Coworth, and he steps in. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. 12-yard touchdown run. And Marlowe Wortham gets the touchdown to open up the score for Georgia Southern. That's one thing they haven't had trouble doing in this last four weeks. Watch, watch the trap block by, by um, Isaac Farrell here that allows Robinson to pitch the ball out to Worthing. He takes and just turns on the speed and hits the corner and gets the score. This is Georgia Southern football that they've been used to seeing and really why the fans here after losing a couple games that they shouldn't have lost were upset because they weren't getting a chance to see. Reed Haley, who kicked the winning field goal last week against Appalachian State, adds on the extra point and makes it a 7 0 score as Georgia Southern celebrates the hometown and homecoming here on a sun drenched Saturday afternoon. Tennessee try to turn this play in, but they never got it turned on the outside corner. Easy score for Georgia Southern. I'll tell you what, what the thing that made that work was Farrell taking. Taking our, our good friend James Russell out of the pitcher to allow Kenny Robinson to pitch that ball out to Marlo Worthen, who just turns on the speed. He's got four guys trailing him into the end zone. So it's a quick 7-0 score as the uh, young junior, two-year letterman out of uh, Warrington and Warren County in Georgia. Six yards, 60, 66 yards in six play, 234. And this is kind of the explosion that Georgia 7 has been able to enjoy as of late. Uh, he scored 56 against Chattanooga, BMI, they gave up 49, they had 31 in losing to Western Carolina, got 34 for the win last week as they kick off, and Haley puts it deep in the end zone, and they will not bring it out, and dropping it down is Lindsey, number two, Corey says, no, we'll get it on the 20, had no chance to get it that far out, first down and 10, for East Tennessee. And Sam, that's really what Georgia Southern needs to do, is make sure that they have time of possession and that they control the ball all game long, because this offense for the Buccaneers is really potent. They can come out here and strike and score in about two minutes. It's not about chewing up the time. It's about putting points on the board. So now we have to see what the Georgia Southern defense will do to try to stop that. There you see Mike Cavan, 1968, one of the outstanding quarterbacks, all SEC quarterback. When he ran that show down there for Georgia, here back to throw is Ryan, and Ryan throws a strike over the middle. And this is going to go to Cecil. Why they say they don't throw too don't much? Throw much. Right there, they hit him for a big play. First down, 10. I'll tell you what, though, Sam, that's, that's what they're going to do is try and tr throw some trick plays in there, do some things that they haven't seen before, like throw the ball to, to see some. Well, the down line when we made mention, uh, as far as the, well, we got the wrong line there with Georgia Southern. Taking James Russell plays on the Georgia other side there for East two. Tennessee, so we'll scrub that for the moment. As East Tennessee comes to the line of scrimmage again at the 35, and they have a first down and 10 yards to go. One of the things that Ryan is being tutored under a great quarterback, and that really kind of opens up this offense. He feels comfortable in making this offense work for East Tennessee. And he's had he's had experience running this in high same type of offense in high school. And now under Coach Cavan, of course, being a great quarterback himself, very, very teaching him a lot of little tricks of the trade, so to speak. And a man jumping offside there is uh, Fredenberg, a 6'5", 300 pounder. And uh, big man, big man indeed. I think I feel, felt the booth move when he jumped <laughs> off sides. <laughs> Dead ball, false start, offense. Ron Buckner is our referee of the afternoon. And his fine staff working behind him. The umpire is Alan Armstrong. The headlines one is Carl Logan. Elsewhere, the line judge is Knox Tate. Field judge is John Lane. And the back judge is Frank Overcash. Those are the officials running the show today here on homecoming for Georgia Southern. It's a 7 nothing score so far as, again, they test the inside of the line. And out of back dragging a peep along by Woodrow Dixon out of Atlanta and Mays High School. 6-1, 205, but shows some good uh, leg strength and carrying tacklers with him. Right now what you see the Buccaneers trying to do is pull this defense of the Georgia Southern up close to the line. You throw a couple bones in there, Sam. You get the linebackers up. You get those defensive, uh, the defensive secondary looking for run support. And then what do you do? You come out throwing the ball long. You know, we talked about Georgia Southern, how they try to stretch the defense and then make the pitch. 
Uh, of course, East Tennessee tries to stretch the defense with those two wide receivers, but they've got to keep it honest inside, as you mentioned. And Ryan is trying to throw quickly, and he pitches it out to the outside to Dixon. Dixon has a full head of steam as he goes into Georgia Southern territory and down just over the 40. They'll spot it down around the 36-yard line. So this offensive East Tennessee, and, you know, we talked about the game, not necessarily on camera, that this could very easily be, uh, you know, a 48-45 to 45 game before it's over. It could be a very, very high-scoring game with really time possession going to Georgia Southern, but the points going to East Tennessee. It's, 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 it could be lopsided because this East Tennessee State offense is really explosive. One of the dangerous things is that everybody can catch the ball, the tight ends, the receivers, the running backs. If you're playing defense right now for the Eagles, you got to watch everybody. Good look at Dixon, who made the last catch. By the way, middle linebacker Paul Carroll, number 43, was back in coverage as they pitch it out here to Jeff Johnson. Johnson, who comes up that reception. That, by the way, for his career is number 104. He now trails the top man in all-time receiving at East Tennessee, Ron Hillman, by only about a dozen catches, and he's going to be the all-time man in catches before he gets through as a senior. You see the numbers on him, averaging nearly 14 yards per carry. With that offensive line that time had the best pass protection we've seen in a long time. It was great throw, great, great catch. I'm telling you, great protection. That allows everything else, everything else to happen. As East Tennessee comes to the line of scrimmage, find down lineman for the Colts and later the Falcons. Ben Hunt waking with us in the booth. We'll talk about that pass blocking in a moment as the handoff goes straight up the middle. And a big gaping hole for Edwards. Edwards goes to the 15-yard line. Another first time for East Tennessee as they move it deeper into Georgia Southern Territory and now threaten. To try to get themselves on the scoreboard here. It's like an offensive game right now. The number one play for the East Tennessee State Buccaneers is the draw. The number one running play is the draw. And that's because they throw the ball so well. And this was nothing more than a classic draw. Everybody fakes pass. They drop back, hand the ball to a Woodrow Dixon, and up the middle he runs. So as they carry, it was Brian Edwards made the carry. One of the freshmen, by the way, of their 22 deep. As far as two men at each position, 12 of the players for East Tennessee are freshmen, either true freshmen or redshirt freshmen. And Edwards is one of those as he continues to run inside. Let me ask you about pass blocking as East Tennessee, you said, was doing a good job. You as a down lineman and pass blocking, the confidence had to build when your quarterback knew what, how long you guys could hold out and which way he could slide one way or the other, correct? Correct. There's, there's really a timing that goes on in all pass plays with the receivers, with the quarterback, and with the offensive line. You've got to hold it for at least three to four counts to make sure that that ball is off and gone. But the receiver's got to do the same thing. Uh -huh. They've got to turn around, look back at the ball, make sure that they get open and run the routes and the ball's released. Of course, the quarterback's got to do a couple other things, step up in the pocket, make sure that, uh, that he can run those guys outside. Here's Ryan rolling to his right, comfortable rolling that way, and he throws it complete again. And they've got a touchdown for East Tennessee. With the catch is Woodrow Dixon. And Dixon turns it into the end zone. And East Tennessee has struck to get close to tying the game. And the extra point will be forthcoming to see if they can put it on the board. Mike Lafferty will come on. He's at 20 of 23. And look how well they execute the play again. Offensive line rolls out. It's just a typical play action pass. But I'm telling you, Greg Ryan is a good quarterback. He doesn't look like a great quarterback. He doesn't have that type of body or build or movement you see a lot of big quarterbacks do. But he couldn't. He knows exactly where to put the ball. One of the big blocks downfield you saw, Jeff Johnson, 5'10", 165, throwing a good block downfield. As the kick is up and they miss it off to the right. So Lafferty misses only for the fourth time this year. Mr. Buckner waving it off, and Georgia Southern holds up for a one-point lead. It looks like it could be a shootout in the sun here in Statesboro. It's 7-6 for the Eagles on homecoming with a one-point lead. And letting Mr. Ryan work as he does very comfortably rolling to his right. Richie Walker pulling out, setting up the block. This is known as a waggle pass. Nice little, nice little pass down to Woodrow Dixon, who runs it in for the score. I tell you what, this could be a very, very good offensive show today. That one-point miss for the extra point could possibly come back to haunt the Buccaneers. Hopefully not, but we'll, we'll, have, to, we'll have to wait and see. Lafferty will be kicking off, and again, what little breeze is blowing here is actually blowing from the side we're on and from left to right across the football field. And Lafferty, again, will not have much benefit of a breeze as he kicks it deep. Where then along with Wright are standing deep, right on the near side, number 21, and they squib it. It'll come up short to one of the short people. They'll take it up to the 30, to the 35, running to the 40-yard line, breaking it to the outside, and they make the run up the center of the football field. And coming up is going to be uh, Roderick Russell, who actually was one of the starting backs right behind Stevens. Now he's been demoted by Holmes, but nonetheless makes a nice run out to the 42-yard line for Southern. 
that's the problem you have to worry about. I don't know if that was really an uh, intentional squib or if it was just a bad kick because typically if you're going to squib it, you don't want to get it to, to a guy that plays running back. Well, the second possession of the afternoon for Georgia Southern. After East Tennessee took over their second possession and got a TD out of theirs, let's see what Georgia Southern can do. Here's a little flare pass going to the outside. They're trying to get Dixon in the open field, but nothing doing. What a great defensive play out on the corner that time by Jeff Horton, number 46. He spelled that one out. And had that been incomplete, that could have been a live ball. That could have been a live ball. I thought Jeff Horton read that. They, they must have sent him a postcard before they threw that play. <laughs> now, Jeff Horton has actually moved over from the strong safety position to fill that cornerback spot. And I tell you he's doing a great job right now. Good they had, stick. They had a lot of changes on both sides of the offense and defensive line for Georgia Southern since getting off to an 0-3 start and now coming back to win three of their last four games. Only a four-point loss at Western Carolina. Mars their last four as they try to option down the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing as Mark Hush puts a hush to that one out of uh, Shelby, North Carolina and Burns High School. He's caused three fumbles and also been in on something like 32 tackles and he's in on another one there. Also, James Russell on the pinch coming down really disrupts this play. That's what we were talking about a little earlier, where Isaac Farrell set the play in the pitch up for Worthing to score. That time, Russell interrupted the entire play for a loss. Another tackle for a loss. Keep in mind that Russell is the main man with 13, and that equates to 67 yards loss on the other side. And Hush is doing his job as they pitch it to the outside. With them battling to the far sideline, and then finally goes out of bounds. And as you can see, they're just desperately trying to get back to the original line of scrimmage, and they don't do it. And it's going to bring up the fourth down and punt time here for Georgia Southern. Good defensive stand there by East Tennessee. Good defensive stand. You know, for Georgia Southern, you've got to come out here and you've got to control the ball. You've got to be able to push it down because as you saw how quickly they can score for East Tennessee. You've got to be able to keep that ball away from them and not put the defense back on the field. This is a great part of their game here at Georgia Southern. Eric Smith, the transfer of Georgia, you saw the numbers with a 41-yard average, and he backs Jeff Johnson back up, and you can see why. This one a little end over end, though. Johnson fields it at his own 24, got away from one tackler, and stepped to the outside of the 32-yard line. And one of the guys that's probably going to be as disappointed as anybody for Georgia Southern was number 19 that was on the play. That's Marco Bradham, normally a sure-handed tackler, but he let him get away, and Johnson, I'm sure, has made other people miss throughout this year. Let us remind you that we have not finished yet because the Southern Conference has a barn burner as the blitz continues tonight. Marshall, the leaders, and Appalachian State, one of those chasing from behind. They'll be playing under the lights in Boone, North Carolina, 7 o'clock. The blitz is on right here on Sports South. Get in front of a television oh, for that one. No, I'm not going to miss that one. Wow. That's going to that's tell just how good Marshall is. Back out of the shotgun is Ryan throwing to Johnson. Johnson will gain about three, and that's going to be all she wrote as the defense collapses in around them and kind of got to help make uh, several of the stops. They are moving people all around in the defense and bringing people off the bench, really trying to find the right combination for Georgia Southern, A, because of injuries, and secondly, because they're just trying to shore up back there. Just trying, yeah, just trying to shore up and get some experience. We've got a penalty on the play, a holding call on East Tennessee State that'll move it back and take away a pretty good catch. Bradham again, you've made mention, had that tremendous Week last week, couple of picks, got some fumbles. I'm telling you, Sam, that's broke up plays. I'm telling you, he had a big. That's the day you kind of go home and you get out your diary. Dear diary, I had a great <laughs> day today. An offensive team, ten yards, spot of the foul. Repeat the down. So they'll repeat that first down play, and after Johnson had to run it out on a fine pitch and run, uh, they have to move it back. It's been ten years since East Tennessee has started out at two and one in the Southern Conference, and they're off to a good start right now. As a matter of fact, their best start was back in 1984 when they beat the Citadel, UT Chattanooga, back-to-back -back after losing to Appalachian State. So in the conference, this is uh, one of their better starts they're enjoying. You know, one of the reasons we were talking about it's real important for East Tennessee State to have a big day today because they're coming into the really hard part of their schedule. Georgia Southern pretty much had all the, the really tough games that they're going to play this year at the beginning of the year. And East Tennessee's kind of had it flipped over where they had a little bit easier repetition, so to speak, earlier in the year. And now they're going to start picking up the big boys. Ryan again using that pocket. He's going for Beatty, and Beatty cannot get back after it. A good defensive play on the far side to knock it away, and Bradham was back there again. Marco Bradham. As he played that center fielder role very well. By the way, when East Tennessee got off to that 2 and 1 start back in 84, they finished the year in the conference 2 and 4, so they didn't win anymore after that. 
Best as four and two. They did that in 1981 and finished third in the conference. You see the defensive play by Bradham. I tell you what, the big play on that game, on, on that particular play, was Greg Ryan taking the hit, but he held the ball to the last minute, threw it out there, threw a really good pass, and took the hit. He is a really, really tough kid that doesn't mind getting knocked around all day long. He'll still get up and still sling the football. Well, Johnson and Beatty together have scored 11 touchdowns so far this year. And of course, uh, Ryan has thrown 11, or excuse me, a dozen, and 11 of those have gone to those two. As again, they try to send that running back up the middle, and Brian Edwards again will do the number as he carries it outside. This is a fine looking uh, running back from that uh, deep back spot, but again, they are just trying to keep it honest, but they got a throw out of this now, second down and long yardage. Three interceptions, set a new school record for picks in a single season here by Marco Bradham. Interesting enough. Having a big homecoming day, huh? Yes, indeed. Third down and roughly about 20 needed here for East Tennessee as the clock winds to four and a half minutes of the first period. Seven six Georgia Southern. Ryan has the green light to change the play at the line of scrimmage and does. It's the two running backs right in on top of him for blocking position. Then has to try to run out of trouble and is not going to do it. As they got the blitz from the outside and coming in is Danny Brett and he makes the play. To it. Danny Britt and Rob Stockton, two guys that are kind of quiet, but they come up with a really big place. Now watch me run. He brings the running backs up to try to catch Paul Carroll. The other guy puts him from the inside, but what happens is they bring the safety off the outside corner, and nobody's there to pick him up because the, because the two running backs are too close to the interior line. Danny, by the way, has shifted from a linebacker spot back to free safety, and you saw he freed up. Collins is going to get a shanker off the side of his foot, gets a good bounce by the Buccaneers. And will carry into Georgia Southern Territory just inside the 45. So he got a pretty good break out of a 39-yard punt. That one could have been kind of ugly. But nonetheless, he gets the big kick to go. I'd like to remind you as we continue the afternoon that at today's crew meals have been provided by Legends Bar and Grill of State. Phony Cowboys. You got it. There you go. For the best food and entertainment, Legends here in Statesboro. <laughs> all right. I got their album, all their albums. East Tennessee. Try to do what they can do here as, again, Georgia Southern taking over the football and uh, Robinson trying to get some yardage on the near side and they'll be just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. And Tim Stowers, and when we were here, you may recall when they lost to Marshall, under a little fire here. They're not used to losing in Statesboro. They've got four national titles, getting off to that 0-3 start, first time ever since they got football back here in 1982. They've turned it around somewhat, going uh, three of their last four in the win column, losing by four to Western Carolina. but. Again, still frantically trying to get above that 500 mark. Robinson handoff straight up the middle. They try to knife out some running room in the middle, and that's Chad Holmes made his first start last week against Appalachian State. Gains a couple on the play. Throwing a little bone to the inside, just trying to suck those linebackers up. You know, I'm from, I'm from a small town right over here by the of Georgia, not far from, from Statesboro, and I understand how important football is here in South Georgia, but also how important winning football is <laughs> and with the record that they've had here at Georgia, Georgia Southern and really the, the fine fine job that Tim Stowers has done they're just not used to it they're not used to seeing losses or even starting off start off the year with a losing season they're not the Vidalia onion working with us in the That's right yeah I get a I get a case of those right here's Robinson down the line of scrimmage oh nailed it as he tried to turn the corner at the line of scrimmage and there was absolutely no place to go inside middle linebacker Greg uh, Wasson Came in to make the stop, and the young man out of uh, Woodstock, Georgia, really played that well. If you're playing defense against a wishbone type of offense, any type of, type of pitch option offense, you got to be very, very disciplined. And it is the job of the defensive lineman to hold everyone up and open up these gaps for the linebackers to, to rush through to make those plays in the backfield, and they did that very, very well. Well, what looked like to be an offensive show has suddenly turned with a couple of defensive stands on both sides, as Smith will kick another one. And watch this one hang. Johnson trying to wave off for the fair catch and does make it just outside his own 15. And that's where East Tennessee will take over the football again after the second punt of the afternoon here by Smith. 34 yards on the kick that time by Georgia Southern. Great hang time. What you want to do is kick the ball high enough, not necessarily as long as high, to make sure that all your team can get down there before he catches the ball. That, that shuts down any type of return attempt he can possibly make. It's a great kick. So East Tennessee again taking over deep in their own territory. We'll see if they can get themselves in the lead as they trail at 7-6 to six here. Good look at Greg Ryan a couple of weeks ago, the player of the week. And had a sensational year last year. Has been able to throw with the best of them. 
They give it to the second back through as they try to slant it to the outside, and Jeff Jones gets the call. And he's going to gain about three yards in the play, brings up a second down, and they'll need roughly about seven, maybe about eight and a half for the first down. Stockton on the defensive uh, stop there. The strong safety coming up for support. Rob Stockton coming up for support did a great job of turning that back inside. This is just a regular, uh, regular full play where the guard is supposed to turn the defensive lineman, the defensive end back inside and turn the, have the back turn the corner, but good outside, uh, outside pressure. Ryan, quick look into Beatty. Beatty gets some contact too early. And uh, Williams all over his back out of... Uh, the defensive quarterback spot, too much contact before the ball ever got there, and it's an easy call for the officiating crew on that one. And Branson's patting himself on the chest saying, yeah, yeah, I know, I, that's that's me, that's my fault. I'll tell you what, in a game where you're going to pass a lot, you're going to see a couple things happen. You're going to see DBs running into the receivers, and you're going to see offensive linemen getting holding calls. Pass interference, defense, it's automatic first down, spot of the foul. So for the spot of the foul, which came... At right at the 25-yard line, it's first down and 10 to go for East Tennessee as they struggle a bit now trying to get their offense back in gear. They came with a touchdown, missed the extra point after Georgia Southern had jumped out, 7 to nothing. See the numbers on Beatty, 20 points last week, second highest single game total in about, uh, since 1957, as a matter of fact. A couple of players scored 24 in games for East Tennessee. Here's the throw to Johnson. He got it up midfield. Nice little slant patterns. It gets inside of Marco Branham. And you can see the danger of Johnson and Beatty. They can really drag you deep. Too, and we were just talking about timing patterns for the pass protection, for the receivers, and for the quarterback. And that's exactly what this is. Brian takes it back, sets up, and just hurls the ball downfield. A great break by Johnson. And he's just, and he's showing what type of receiver he is right there, crossing in the middle with all the other blue shirts there. Big catch, big play. First three yard pickup. Was indeed. You see the numbers on JJ, wide receiver, as he's really had quite a day already from Greenville, Mississippi, and they're throwing to him again. Just trying to isolate him out on the outside, a la what San Francisco did so many years with Joe Montana and their great receivers. They do it with Johnson here. But Sam, that's a great comparison because this is a this is a offense that passes and uses the pass to set up the run as opposed to so many other offenses that run the ball to set right. up the pass. These guys are not, and that's also the reason why the number one rushing play is the draw. Couple of players down, Johnson for one for East Tennessee. There's also a Georgia Southern player down about five feet from him. And I'm not sure they didn't just almost knock each other out here. Johnson getting up slowly and you see the other fallen warrior so far. Jeff Johnson just trying to make a couple of jerk there. Get it upfield. I think you got two George Southern guys that hit each other. Yeah, and a collision. Coming for the kill. You saw the good hard hit put on by Stockton as he turned him on the inside, and that's where the collision happened with Georgia Southern players coming down. Georgia Southern, by the way, has been very tough in the month of October. You don't want to play him here. You see Bradham is the fallen eagle. They're 39 and 11 in the month of October. They got this kind of weather and uh, this kind of crowd. Certainly they're going to enjoy those days. And again for homecoming, they're 11 and 1 on homecoming day, losing only the first time since 1982. They lost their first homecoming at 11 in a row. Not bad. Not not too bad. Good stats. Well, this is a tough customer to beat down as well. He takes a lot of hits. You don't want to be losing him. Yes, he. You know, with a guy like Jeff Johnson, one reason that makes him really good is because guys don't get real good, clean shots on him. And you saw that. Two guys, Marco two Brandon. Georgia Southern he guys, one day, Marco Brandon, Brandon, come in hard, trying to make the big stick on a great player. He slips it, and they kind of hit themselves. Good news. Certainly Jeff Johnson for East Tennessee one way. He looks like he's all right. And the better news is that Bradham is up. And he, too, is trotting towards the Georgia Southern sideline, so both of the fallen players up. That's what Bradham's too mean. He's way too mean to sit this one out. <laughs> it's homecoming day, Sam. And a lot of his friends and family from Savannah have come down the interstate to see him play here in Statesboro as they wind towards the end of the quarter. And before they can get the play off, the quarter is over. So that's going to do it for quarter number one of homecoming here in Statesboro. And the Eagles of Georgia Southern enjoying a one-point lead over the Buccaneers of East Tennessee. Sports South coverage of the Southern Conference will continue after this timeout. Ready to start the second quarter, and East Tennessee with this man, Greg Ryan, have started to put together a pretty good drive. Look at the numbers already, 7 of 9 for 106, and of course is thrown for a score. So he is accurate. They try to bust it up the middle, they do to Edwards. Edwards again, who has really turned on some 
very nice running this afternoon. And again, that passing, spreading the field, has opened up the inside game for them. Spreading the field and giving everybody a cushion. But I'll tell you what, Sam, that was great blocking by the offensive line of East Tennessee State. Watch, watch Brian Edwards just kind of make his way through here. We're going to have some great offensive line. Wes Jones is in there blocking. Chris Gentry, Richie Walker. Just great blocking and a good hard run. That's another fine freshman running into the secondary there. As Edwards picks up good yardage, and the 6'2", 200-pounder gets lined up again. And this time there's motion on the line, and flags come flying. Option being explained to Greg Ryan, the quarterback for East Tennessee. They're starting to fill up a little bit on the grass on one of the end zones. Dead ball, false start, offense. Be first down and 15. So the offensive line uh, jumping there. You never jumped off sides, did you? Never, you Sam. Never jumped off sides and never held. I'll tell you the big difference between college. <laughs> I'll tell you the <laughs> big difference between college and pro is that in the college when they say, you know, off sides, illegal motion, in the pros they say number 64, Ben Ott. But here they just, uh, just blame it all on the offense. Everybody gets gets a little, get to share the blame. So That's right. By the way, you don't have any swampland in Louisiana one no, summer, do you? Never held. It's a first down. And about 14 needed here as they give it to Edwards again. Yeah, nice slant to the outside. Look, can you use that quickness? And he dives his way inside the 20-yard line to about the 17-yard line. This is a pretty nice-looking running back for them right It's now. a real good-looking running back. I tell you what, Thomas Plant for Georgia Southern almost got that play in the backfield. But Brian Edwards, Brian Edwards had a chance to get by there and make some great yardage. Watch Edwards slip through here, 99. Try, you can't leg tackle a guy like this that's this big and this strong. One of the things that East Tennessee seems to be doing a great deal of as well is uh, this point, I was getting some good zone blocking as well. They're just kind of holding uh, holding their zone block and not really trying to do too much with it. In fact, if you watch the white jerseys over the blue jerseys, with the exception of a couple of situations, you'll see the blue jerseys move back almost every time. Johnson, he fumbles the football inside the 10. Let's see if the ground created a fumble. Georgia Southern, I believe, is on top of it, but East Tennessee is also clawing at the bottom of that pile. And they're unstacking him, but J.J. Johnson took a big hit from the outside, and the ball did indeed spring loose. And Georgia Southern has got the fumble recovery. There's a big discussion going on now, and they're still not over with this thing. Georgia Southern's already celebrated, they're over. and they've got the football. Let's see if the football was loose on the hit. Great set and play. Looks, looks off two other receivers and goes back to Johnson. I think Marco Bradley just stripped the ball here. Gets, there Marco it is. strips yes. the ball. It comes down. That is a great call by the officials to be on top of that. And guess who got it? Marco Bradham. Marco Bradham. What a day he's, he's having. He's a monster, again. I'm telling you. <laughs> there he creates the fumble. Now, they, now watch the ball. Now, they coach defensive backs to do that. When you wrap a guy up, if the ball is, if you can visually see the ball, pull it out. Don't just take him down. Pull out the ball. Man in motion as they swing it to the right side. Kenny Robinson, redshirt freshman. Young man who hails from Concord, North Carolina, and he has had quite a run since starting his first game against the number one team in the country, Marshall. It was not a good day for him that day, nor any of the Eagles as Marshall rolled over him here in Statesboro, but since that time, he's really started to come of age. That's part of the learning experience. This is what I like about Kenny Robinson. When they, Georgia Southern has been sputtering a little bit, he takes the ball down instead of pitching, pitching and everything else, goes, goes ahead and has the confidence to pull it down and get upfield with it, gets the first. There are two dangerous receivers, Harris, and in particular number 85, that is Dawson. As you see him running into the center line, both those two receivers split left and right, and they pitch it. And coming back as they pitch it to Shafton Fraley. And Fraley, who was one of the runners that really came on strong as one of the young players here, went through a rash of injuries. Had he not been injured, he could have been one of the real fine ones come through here. But again, he runs at a senior three-year letterman. Shafton is one of the members of the hand club. There were nine guys on this Georgia Southern team that broke their hands. Shafton just now got his cast off where he doesn't have to wear it on a daily basis. That's got to be a good situation if they do get him back because uh, he and Wortham make up quite a tandem there. Real good tandem. They call them the twins, but they uh, uh, also you got to rotate those backs. And as much as you run on this Georgia Southern team, you got to be rotating those horses in every other play. Second down, still 10 yards to go for Georgia Southern. Second period, 13 minutes to go. 7 6 Georgia Southern if you're just joining us here on Sports South. Don't forget the Blitz will continue with Marshall and Appalachian State tonight at 7. And a nice little pitch to the outside going to Harris. And Alphonse will not get away from the defenders. And 
I tell you what, Jeff Horton may be very much in the running for our first union player of the game because he's been defensively all over for the Buccaneers. Georgia Southern uh, un uncharacteristically throwing the ball right now, and the reason I say uncharacteristically is because if they just don't throw the ball very much, it's probably one of the downsides to a really good Georgia Southern team and maybe having a young left-handed freshman starting a quarterback where you don't get a chance to throw the ball as much and have a balanced attack. They come wide side to the left, and a quick penetration as they try to pitch it off. Did they get it off? No. Boy, at the last second, Robinson had a knee down, says Mr. Buckner, the referee. And that was a dangerous play, but a kind of a... What a smart, very heads, play very by heads Robinson. Though. And James Russell coming on the slant, coming down, which uh, East Tennessee State will do. They'll slant their defensive ends, pulling down. Heads up play by a young quarterback to try to make the play with the pitch. By the way, since he was rolling to uh, throw, that is his seventh sack of the year by Russell. And another one of those tackles for a loss for him as he's had quite a year already. As Smith now will have to kick out of the shadow of his own end zone. It's an end over end kick in Georgia, East Tennessee. The ball is loose. Johnson made a dive at it. The ball was up for grabs, but East Tennessee has had the recover of the football and wisely right on top of it. Donnie Abraham, the defensive back number 42, was there to save the day for East Tennessee trailing by a point. To put out of your mind that you can catch everything, and maybe in this case, Johnson probably should have had that in his mind. Great confidence, but what coaches want you to do in a situation like that where the ball's way up and you've got to dive to make the catch, you're supposed to run off to the side, away from it, and put your hand up and start waving like you're, and act like you're going to catch the ball. You wave like your girlfriend's in the stands. Well, you can see East Tennessee has not had a three game, three winning uh, games on the road. You can see for quite a while they have two so far this year. And they're looking for a third one here. A tough place to get it, however, at Paulson Stadium in Statesboro. Ryan back to throw in the pocket. He's throwing for Johnson. He's back there with Stockton. They bump it around the five. Incidental contact, says the referee. And they'll bring it back for just a long, incompleted pass. Kind of like the no call on it because both going for the football, I thought. Yeah, it wasn't in the alley. It wasn't. Uh, both, both players had to adjust to get to the ball, so it's not a penalty. It's not a penalty. Rob Stockton, number 14, was the man that was down there, and this is a, this is a pretty good challenge for him against Johnson. You saw, you saw Brian kind of lose his balance there a little bit, slipped a little bit on his on his drop back. You know, if anything, that throw. could have been offensive interference because Stockton had the inside on him there. Yeah. When you yeah. Good point. It's a good point. So Johnson, again, kind of climbed the back of Stockton down around the five, stopping the clock with 11.30 left to play here in the second period. Second down and 10 for East Tennessee. They are already deep. Here they come with a little razzle-dazzle. Johnson, who can throw off of this, he's going to take it on the run, though. And is hammered out of bounds as he crosses the out-of-bounds line. And none of the Eagles are going to help him up, that's for sure. <laughs> he, he, paid, he paid for that. He was looking for a friendly hand, but didn't get any. I tell you what, Greg Ryan went down that field block, stuck his stuck his face right in the middle of someone's chest. Didn't knock him down or anything, just got it, in their way. Well, that's called uh, detain blocking, yeah, isn't that called? Tatum. I'm guilty of a few of those, I think. They have six yards on the game, so it's third down and a long four needed by East Tennessee on this third down. By the way, their field goal kicker, Mike Lafferty, he's had a 43-yarders have been as long, but he hasn't missed. He's four for four for field goals, but it's definitely way out of his range right now. Not had a lot of chances to kick field goals. They nope. put it in the end zone. They don't get close. Exactly. Oh, they've got a good punter that they've relied on as well. College, he's had a little trouble today, though. Here's Edwards again. He's going to get the first down. And he's suddenly become their workhorse. Edwards came in with 503 yards rushing, averaging 83 per game. So this is really not a surprise. And he averages about six yards per carry. That's a really good call in a situation where, you know, it's long, fourth down, third down. you got to get the first. You're thinking pass. Everybody's kind of backed up and giving some cushion. You call the draw, and you can have confidence in a guy like Brian Edwards to, to get it done. You know, Mike Cabin, as you take a look at here from East Tennessee, he's got a pretty good advantage on the defensive line, 6-2-2. Uh, 73 make that 64 273 and they're going against 62 232 on the other side so they've got a pretty good command of the weight if they can just maintain that on the line of scrimmage for East Tennessee they're coming out for a measure here very short East Tennessee by the way after this game will be back home next Saturday against Furman and then on the fifth against Marshall you can see they miss it by about the half the length of the football so it'll bring up a fourth down play and Mike Cabin makes the decision and he leaves his offensive unit in on the fourth down play you know you got momentum on your side you're moving the ball and you're controlling it keep him in and go for it this could be a big big lift for the Buccaneers by the way they're five of ten and fourth down conversion so 50%. 50 I'll take that I'll tell you what and you know what sometimes you look at those stats and you actually use them because you know you guys can make these fourth down conversions 32 yard line is the line of scrimmage and it's Ryan easily gets the first down down to 29 
And I tell you what, he's got to credit that right side. And guess who's over there? 300 pound Mike Fredenberg as he just moved a massive line out of the way. Big Mike Fredenberg. All this is, this is whether, you know, man on man, who wants it worst? You get the down block from Friedenberg. Yeah. And, and Beatty just, excuse me, Ryan just slips up through there. Good Sam could have run through there. Now give us a break here now. <laughs> uh, Chris Gentry, the center, by the way, 6'2", 265. You saw him double team with Fredenberg. And I tell you what, the kickout block by Dotson was a good one as well. So it's a first out for East Tennessee. Ryan, he's in that comfort zone. He's throwing to the near sideline. This time trying to get it to the man they never right, throw to. Cecil, and he closes it out of bounds. How cool do you have to do something to have the name Fox? Uh, you got to back it up, that's for sure, or ride a bike, I'm not sure. This is almost a little bit of a forced pass by Greg Ryan, where he throws it down, and right, Francis Williams has a good chance to pop this ball, bring it down with him. I think they're looking for the height factor between Williams and Cecil. Williams comes into this game as the third leading tackler. And you can see the total offense right now that East Tennessee has marched it up and down the football field. So they're also holding the ball longer. As we said earlier, time of possession is going to be a real important factor in this game. If Georgia Southern can't control it because they can't score as quickly as East Tennessee State. Keep it out of the hands of Kenny Robinson there. They're throwing for broke over the middle, and it's up for grabs at around the five-yard line. Jumping from one side was Edwards, who they took out of the backfield. And the man back there is the middle linebacker, Paul Carroll, number 43. And also dropping back is Eric uh, Figpin. Big pin out of Fort Walton Beach, number 27 back there as well. And Eric's a, Eric's a real interesting uh, sort. He gives gives the defensive secondary a little bit of depth. He does a great job of stripping the ball. That's how we were talking a little bit earlier, defensive backs. They don't want to just make the tackle. They want to pull the ball down, cause those fumbles. Well, you see Georgia Southern making some changes. You can run the nickel. You can run the dime. I think they ran the quarter in there. They really know that Ryan on this third down and 10 are going to run a lot of backs in there. I don't think it's going to be the draw this time. He's out of the shotgun, too, as he looks for the block. Gentry, the center. Nice snap back to Ryan. He's got time over the middle, throwing the bait. He knocked away by Stockton. It'll bring up a fourth down play. Stockton timed that beautifully right over the top. It's a great play. And they're, all, all they're doing is following the man, the defensive man through there. Brian steps back, unloads the ball right into the middle of triple coverage, it looks like. Stockton, you can see, wearing a brace and a cast on that right hand. He went up and knocked it away with the right hand. There it is. So that's the kind of confidence Ryan has in both Beatty and Johnson. He will throw it with two into double coverage, triple coverage. Well, Lafferty's going to try a field goal. Again, he's four for four with his longest of 43. This will come from the 36. That would be a 46-yard try and a little slight wind at his back. But he'll have to be iced by the defense as they take a timeout. The Eagles leading by a point. Watch this defensive play. Remember this hand club. He comes across, just follows Jeff Johnson all the way down and bats it down with his cast. That's well, using your total body, Sam. That's exactly Using everything right. you got. There's Stockton right in the middle. Rob, who... Hales from uh, Clayton, Georgia, and Ray Ames. On his 31st, 32nd start is Mike Lafferty. Four for four, 43 his longest. This will be a 36-yard try. The holder is the punter, Collins. The snap man is Mark Preston. The kick is up, and it may have enough room. And it is good. good. Just skipped off the goal post and goes through from 46 yards away, and Lafferty has now put East Tennessee in the lead by the score of 9-7, to seven, and that is a big booster for East Tennessee. That is a big, big boost. Lafferty being perfect for field goals now, 5-for-5, five five, uh, as opposed to the extra points where he's missed a couple, but doing really well. Watch it as it nips off the side of the goal post. You great angle as our camera folks have it for you here. And watch this kick. Goes right off the right side, or the inside of the right goal. Watch, watch the body lean by Lafferty. Look at, look at Lafferty. <laughs> lean and lean and uh, Perfect. Great great camera work, guys. That's a nice that's a nice one-cushion shot for them. As on the other side, Tim Stowers is going, oh, what do you got to do here? His team now trailing by the score of 9-7. to seven, And they'll receive the football. And Lafferty will be kicking off for East Tennessee. And, uh, you know, you take a look at East Tennessee with a 5-6 and six record last year and coming in, and, of course, with a 2-1 conference record, they're still very much in a conference chase. And you hit it right on the head on the pregame. I mean, we're talking about playoff implications on this for really both of these clubs. For both of these clubs, exactly. mathematically, nobody's out of it. But, but you're in the middle of the season right now, and you've got to keep roles going. If East Tennessee State 
stumbles here. They've got to pick it back up, go on the road again, try and start, start winning. Uh, and there's so many good teams right now, Marshall being really a, just a leader among the pack. I think it's going to be very, very hard for the team that loses this game to get a playoff berth. So the kickoff by East Tennessee will come up to the far side. Wharton gets it on the far side and takes it out to near the 30-yard line. I believe they'll spot it around the 29-yard line. Kickoff, by the way, was Jeremy Karchik, who made the kickoff for East Tennessee, number 24. And a fine carry out to the 29. It'll be first and 10 with Georgia Southern there for fourth possession of the football game. They're trailing, however, by two. There's been some pretty good running backs for number 32. That's uh, Reed Haley, who kicked the 27-yarder last week that broke a 31 all-tie. What a comeback by Appalachian State. Scott Satterfield threw three touchdown passes, two of those going to Don Blue, and Appalachian State came back from 31-10 down, but the kick by Reed Haley won it here for Haley, excuse me, won it for Georgia Southern, and they won it 34-31. Nice pitch to the outside, and good to see Mr. Fraley back and running the football well here for Georgia Southern. Shepton Fraley's got his cast off, and he's, he's one of the slot backs that really has a little bit more speed than the others. Takes the pitch, and then, then it's nothing but looking for that alley on the outside. You see uh, Alfonso Harris getting a nice block and holding up the DB or the cornerback on the outside there. He'll can get another three yards. Always like those running backs with all that speed, and they wear that old, ugly high top they got. And he's yeah. wearing a high top, but still looks like he's a flash. <laughs> Full throw back here. That's right. Year Second down and two. Robinson. Left-hander squares up. He's going deep, wide open as Harris. Harris at the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Fumbles the football. It goes to the end zone, goes out of the end zone, and it's going to be a touchback, I believe, will be brought back out, and it belongs to East Tennessee as the ball fumbled in the end zone by Alfonso Harris as he fumbles in the end zone. Nobody recovered. It goes out of the side of the end zone and thus belongs to East Tennessee as apparently they're the last people to get a hold of it before it goes out of there. They're discussing that right now. An unbelievable play. Wow. Unbelievable. Watch this. this Sam, this starts off, starts off as a broken coverage. So, somebody who's supposed to be covering Alfonso Harris isn't there. He's wide open. It's a dream come true. Takes the ball. He hustles down. Really a nice strip. A nice strip by Mike Scott. Ball goes in the end zone, unfortunately rolls out for Georgia Southern. So they'll actually spot the ball at the three where East Tennessee will take over. As again, look how open Harris is. And again, Scott with a good strip from behind. Harris, I I'm telling you, Harris is wondering, where, where, where are they? Somebody's supposed to be covering me. First of all, he's got to ship the ball to the outside hand. That was a key right yeah. there. I think the key of Thomas, who was supposed to cover him, probably a mismatch on, on their part to, to line a linebacker over the receiver like that. So East Tennessee gets a major break and pitches it to Harris. Stopped and tries to turn him to the outside and does. Runs right into Marco Bradham, who makes the stop finally after a gain of five. And now East Tennessee trying to get out of some running room area, and they pitch it out. They'll actually gain only about three and a half, make it four, and it's second down and six. And Tim Stowers, who has that Bear Bryant voice of his, probably is growling a bit on the sidelines right now. He's not happy with the last turn of events. You see the Georgia Southern has now turned the ball over 17 times this season. 13 of those have been by fumble. Same time last year, they only had a dozen turnovers the entire year. And Sam, you can see exactly a win-loss record with most teams by their turnovers, by their plus and minus column. Dumping underneath East Tennessee, throwing to the back. Dixon out of the backfield. Just as he caught the football, he's hammered by Scott Davis out of Powder Springs. 6-2, 216, and he really nails him. Great, ooh, I tell you, nice, nice hit by Scott Davis. That's what every linebacker wants to do is make a guy, they call it blowing a snot bubble. When you hit him that hard, <laughs> where you make him cough. You hit him that, they actually bark, Sam, almost, you know, almost like dogs when you hit a guy that hard. <laughs> you can see how the intensity of this game certainly picking up. 9-7 the score, East Tennessee with the lead in the ball. And again, they go underneath. Well, Dixon must have gone back to the huddle and said, hey, he hit me, but I'm ready to catch it again, and he does again. Now he gets up limping, and he has to come out. And this wasn't even the hardest hit of the two. When you start throwing the ball like this and you, you get the cushion from the linebackers pushing back, there's a little area that opens up right between the linebackers and the defensive line. And what they're doing right now is they're getting Woodrow Dixon, the fullback, just kind of work his way in there and dumping the ball over the top of the offensive line. 
Kent Hamilton has, or Hampton, excuse me, Kent Hampton, number 45, has replaced Dixon as the fullback. Lines up as the short back. They give it to Edwards on a second and two, and he's going to gain about five. You know, the East Tennessee offense under Mike Cavan has certainly showed some very good brilliance today against Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern has given up a lot of points so far this year, but, you know, you take the football in your own three-yard line and uh, have just literally barged it out to where they are right now. I'll tell you what, it's really, really hard to win if you're going to drop the ball right there at the end zone. And, of course, the numbers on Mr. Ryan certainly keeps the defense very, very uh, honest. You know, this is a kid that uh, comes in, and he's only a sophomore from Maryville, Tennessee. Really has a lot of poise. Yeah, earlier you were giving a stat about the number of, the number of freshmen and young players on the right. East Tennessee State team. This team isn't going to do anything but keep getting better and better exactly. because this year they're all getting experience. And better than that, they're all learning how to win. Well, you saw the poise right there by Ryan as he says, uh-oh, I don't like that defense, particularly with what I've got called and what I can audibleize to. And he takes a timeout. On Sports South Blitz of the Southern Conference Football. You see East Tennessee clad in their gold helmets, white jerseys, and the gold pants in the lead by two. And they throw it to Johnson again. Jeff Johnson who is slowly but surely starting to creep on on that uh, reception record at East Tennessee. Came in with 103. 115 is the total. He makes another big catch out to the 46-yard line. That's the play we saw a little bit earlier, that waggle play where, they, where it's a rollout by the quarterback and the offside guard pulls to give some little personal protection out there. But I tell you what, Jeff Johnson is just working himself open right in the middle of a crowd of people and catching the ball every time. He is indeed, and just almost he's found a, a little slot in there, and Tommy Spangler, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Southern, is trying to short up, and this time they may have with an intercept. A diving intercept by Danny Britt, and Georgia Southern has filled that little gap and come up with a big play they need as the free safety comes over for the intercept. A big, big play by Danny Britt on this, just to drop back and follow the ball. Ryan's got a little bit of pressure, but Danny Britt just runs, steps right in front of it, takes the pick. So as Georgia Southern takes over the football at their own 40-yard line, again, an interception there by Danny Britt, who again had been moved from linebacker on the outside. B.T. Tanner has moved in to take his spot, and Britt has taken over where Williams had to move to the corner. So they've had some real shuffling in that secondary, and it paid off there. Little tight quarters for Robinson. Pitches at the last minute. Arlo Warden coming to the outside, and he's going to gain roughly about seven, eight yards, and Georgia Southern would like to tack on a score before the halftime break. 7.07 left to go in the first half. This is a great misdirection play by Kenny Robinson. The mechanics of running this particular play is very, very difficult. You have to go one way, pivot around, come back the other way, right on the line of scrimmage while your offensive line is blocking, trying to keep all these, all the bad guys off you, so to speak. And a good play by uh, Marlowe Wooden to turn it up on the outside. Well, if things don't turn around here for Georgia Southern, they're going to think about that fumble in the end zone by Harris for a long time in this game. As you can see, Robinson with his cadence draws the defense off from the line of scrimmage, big number 75 is Jermaine Bosket jumping off, and he's going to get the five-yard penalty. Or did the ball move by the center? More than likely, it was the defense. Offensive guys don't make mistakes. No, but and once once in a while, you can get these uh, get these pretty savvy centers. <laughs> they'll squeeze the ball on the hard count. Yeah. Make these guys jump off. Not the case right now, though. By the way, I have to say that about offensive linemen because we both were offensive <laughs> linemen. Me, very young, and you, of course, in the pros. And of course, offensive linemen always been the best looking of the guys on the team. Now, let's not stretch the truth here. <laughs> First down play for Georgia Southern. Wide receivers. Left and right. They hand it off in the inside man. And with the room is Russell. And Roderick gets it across to the 25. Still on his feet. Down to the 17-yard line. Roderick Russell. Gets the big carry, and the red-shirt freshman who had been put in behind Tyrone Stevens when he went down with a bad knee has been replaced by Holmes, but he's battling to get that spot back again for the Eagles. Watch the, watch the blocking and the pure running by Roderick Russell. Roderick's got to love this. He's using his blocks. He's getting it downfield, but he's got to love this. He's a guy that was he had a chance to start. He had a couple bad fumbles and got sitting down to, to second team, really, behind Chad Holmes. Comes out and makes a great play. Boy, he used that setup block, even though it wasn't that big a block by Stacy Moses, number 77, but he just kind of played off of it. Stacy Moses is big enough to hide behind, too. Robinson, quick-footed young freshman, takes it down to the 10-yard line. And Georgia Southern 
saying, well, we fumbled in the end zone, but we got to get it there another way, and they're doing the best that they can after the intercept, and again, a big one by Danny Britt. Six minutes, 18 seconds to go in the first half of the game. Of course, if they score quick enough, certainly the Buccaneers have plenty of time to kind of take it right back at halftime here with the score. Six minutes is all, is all the time in the world for the Buccaneers. Wide receivers, Harris and Dawson, split to the right. They give it to Russell, and no place to run to. Big man in the middle was Mark Hush out of Shelby, North Carolina, number 96. And friends make the stop right at the line of scrimmage. One of the things you'll see East Tennessee State defensive line do is a lot of stunts. They'll pinch their tackles in and also their ends in. But what they'll also do is run what you call a, an ET. They'll have they'll bring the tackles down, on, or excuse me, the ends down on the pinch, and then loop the defensive tackles to the outside. They're to pick up contain. But what the whole thing really does, especially against an option offense, is disrupt the play mm -hmm. and causes things like that to happen. And of course, Georgia Southern would love them to be on those stunts on the outside and run something inside as they're stunning as they go with Russell and try to pick it up, but a flag is down back behind the play. Last year, all the championship game as it turned out for Georgia Southern, it was 31-24, and you saw at the start of the show, Jeff Johnson caught a ball in the end of the end zone, or at least was trying to, and he ran out of the end zone. Had they been able to catch it, that would have been a very dangerous play to tie that game up, but as it turned out, Georgia Southern wins at Johnson City and wins the outright title in their first year as a conference member in the Southern Conference. I was talking with Tommy Spangler uh, earlier this week, the defensive coordinator for Georgia Southern. Let's see what the call is. Illegal shift on the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat third down. What is that normally? A couple of guys in motion, you think? Yeah. And uh, well, Tommy, Tommy Spangler was saying that uh, one of the things indicative of last year's game against East Tennessee State, but also against West Carolina and App State last week, was that the Georgia Southern Eagles need to play 60 minutes of football. Mm -hmm. Even a lead like they had last week against Appalachian State isn't going to isn't going to get guarantee you a win. These teams can come back. This is the Southern Conference. There's dynamic offenses in this league right now. Anybody can come back and win. You got to play 60 minutes of full football. Georgia Southern has given up 34 points in the fourth period in the last two games, and that is enormous. Left-hander throwing to the end zone. Lots of bumping down inside the five. First uh, intended receiver, number 21, was Chris Wright and the deep man there. You see him, Dexter Dawson. And boy, he is a dangerous receiver when he gets his hands on the football. Has not scored a touchdown, interesting enough, but has caught over 300 yards and passes from Robinson and Dupree early in the year. This is really a hard move for a left-handed quarterback to make. You roll out to your right. First of all, he's got pressure on Roll out to your right, mm -hmm. and you have to throw with your left. Um, just, just a tough play. Tough play. Good coverage by East Tennessee State. Reed Haley, who had a 27-yarder to win it last week, will try to give his team the lead as he'll kick it up from the 33 on the long kick, and it's up, and it is no good as he hooks it to the left. So the 33-yard field goal attempt is no good by Haley. You saw him having to ice his leg down a few moments ago, and as he misses the field goal, it'll come to the line of scrimmage, which in this case will be... We're at right at the 20. I believe it is, and that's where East Tennessee will take over the football. When a kicker's got ice a knee, a groin, an ankle, anything like that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hurt his mechanics on how he kicks the ball, where he steps up to it, plants his foot, and swings. In this case, it shows no points on the board. That's where, that is really tough for Georgia Southern. Tim Stowers in his offensive unit. Certainly the coaches got to go back into the locker room and try to find out what has gone wrong. A fumble to the end zone, certainly they would have had six points there. Now they can't get the field goal as East Tennessee has had an opportunity to throw up the defense. There's a timeout call on the field. Joe Paquino, he is here today, by the way. He's on the field working with us. Joe, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to you too, Sam. You talked about Reed Haley just missing that field goal. He's experiencing a little stiffness in his left knee uh, that came about in practice this week. Uh, it could come vital to Georgia Southern. He's complete, uh, 91 out of 92 point after attempts in his career. And he had his, uh, last week, he uh, had his seventh multiple field goal game against App State. Could come down to a kicking game as this has been a very tight defensive ball game so far. Back upstairs, gentlemen. Thank you, Joe. Of course, Lafferty with a long 46-yard field goal. That's his longest of the year. And Haley, you can see him kind of shaking out the cramps in his legs right now and no one more disappointed this young man as his team still trails for the score of nine to seven now this is a young man who's had over 50 yards in his kicking as a matter of fact I believe 53 is his career high was kicking him from as far away as 65 in the pregame but Charlie Lyle of the Southern Conference like a punter and like a field goal kicker he didn't have another 
different colored shirt coming at him. So maybe that makes a little difference. But nonetheless, his team still trails by two. I'll tell you what, and if you're if you're a kicker, you're like a doctor. Nobody really wants to see unless you really, really need it. And when they come out to kick those field goals, I tell you, your offensive line, everybody else, they want you to make that thing. Never a miss. Well, That's here's all you do. The, here's the spread with the eye by East Tennessee. They give it to Edwards, and Edwards plowing ahead to about the 24-yard line. Updating some of the other uh, Southern Conference scores, there's a final now. Furman has defeated VMI with a score of 28 to 11. So they get the Bobby Johnson gets the victory for Furman. And also we have with 10 minutes to go in the fourth period, Western Carolina's all over uh, UT Chattanooga by the score of 46 to 18. So the Catamounts, the Rally Cats, they don't like luck. They have to come from behind to win this one after getting uh, defeated last week by Marshall. Here, our score is 9-7 East Tennessee. Ryan again to Edwards, and he just pushes the pile ahead to about the 30, maybe enough for the first down. Georgia Southern saying the ball is free. Thought they had a fumble interception or fumble recovery there. You know, another very good friend of mine, Sonny Lubick, who's now the head coach at Colorado State University. They're playing Utah today, and uh, both those teams in the top 20, but what a turnaround. Defensive coordinator down at uh, University of Miami going out to uh, Colorado State, and uh, it's good to see assistants like Mike Cavan, like Tim Stowers, get the opportunity to coach, and Sonny Lubick's done a great job out in Fort Collins, Colorado with the Rams. But not only get a chance to coach, but really kind of put, come in and put their blueprint in place. They learn a lot of things from their mentors and other coaches, and they're able to put their kind of game plan, plan and their package together. It's good to see that. After the measurement, it's a first and ten, and Ryan rolling out, going to Beatty. And Beatty's had some trouble with Marco Bradham, and he's got more trouble, and Bradham timed that one beautifully, and Beatty's really hurt as he really took a shot in the rib cage. And Marco Bradham is the one that put the stick on him, and uh, Beatty writhing in pain on the sideline. And watch as he extends up and gets hit right in the ribs. Beatty is, Beatty is really hurting. If there's one thing about uh, Greg Ryan that, that might be tough is that it throws the ball a little bit high, which will expose the ribs of these receivers who are really trying to go up there and pull the ball, ball down. When you do that, you got rib and you got a guy like Marco Brown doing nothing but beating in on those ribs. And Beatty, one of the top uh, four receivers in the history of uh, East Tennessee State University on the field, by the way, to add to their woes, there was also a flag down and there will be a penalty stepped off, it appears, against the Buccaneers. As again, Beatty again is down. Holding on the offense. Pete, first down. Let's see, what the, let's see what this is when Brown throws the ball. It's just. It's probably, probably got a shoulder pad in there. Yep. Give him a good stick still in the ribs. It's, you, you hate to see a guy like Beatty go down because he's what he's what games like this is all about. You want to win. And if you ask Tim Stowers, he'll tell you, I want to beat them with their very best. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to have to beat them with their second team or anybody else. I want their very best to come out here and compete head up. Well, there you see the good sign that Beatty is trotting off. He and Johnson, their two wide receivers, have been shaken up. Uh, of course, Marco Bradham, who just put the hit on, also was shaken early in the game, and hopefully all three will be able to continue as Johnson and Marco Bradham have come back and will wait on the progress of uh, Beatty, who trots off on his own steam. After the step off on the holding at the line of scrimmage, it's a first down and 20 here for East Tennessee. They run Robert Robinson in, replacing Beatty, number 82 now. Back to throw is Ryan. Underneath, he throws to Johnson. Good open field tackle on the far side by Williams. And Williams, number two, the corner, played that about as well as you can play it with a guy with that kind of speed. Played it just about as well as you can play it. Nothing but straight drop back pass, and, and guess who he goes to? Jeff Johnson. Yep. Think about this, this, this group of receivers called the core. They call themselves the core, kind of dubbed themselves, give them a nickname. But that's good because it makes them work together. They've got some talent. Jerani Rollins was in there that time. Also, Robert Robertson. You can go to any of these guys and almost be sure that they're going to pick up some yardage for you. After the shotgun try here with a second down, by the way, they gained around uh, six yards on the last pass play. So it's second down and 14, and Ryan is airing it out. And Beatty is back in. But just as he gets his hands on the football, Stockton and Bradham both collide with each other and make the defensive stop. When you've got receivers like Johnson and also on Beatty, as we watch this pass playing again, you become a little one-dimensional if you don't kind of throw a third and fourth person in there, though, don't you, Ben? Absolutely. What, what happens is you'll start, everybody on the defense is going to start eyeballing number one and number nine, mm -hmm. and they know the ball's going there. The other thing that they'll do, too, what your linebackers will do is they'll start watching Greg Ryan, the quarterback, because he's only looking two places. If he starts looking at Johnson, the ball doesn't go off on time. You know it's going over to Beatty. 
they they pick up, it makes it easy to pick the ball off that way. May recall they threw the tight end, Fonz Cecil, early in the game. They need a lot more than throwing to a tight end right now as Ryan backpedals. Only a three-step drop, and he's throwing it for Johnson. Bradham giving chase, makes the dive, but can't catch up with it. But they were trying to get Johnson one-on-one -on, -one on Bradham, and Bradham, who was off the line of scrimmage by about 20 yards, had that played well. I tell you what, Mike Cavan, he's going for he's going for all the marbles every time. He's, you know, that's, that's basically just a Hail Mary pass, Sam, trying to make something happen, get the first down or touchdown. By the way, David McKnight, the quarterback coach, offensive coordinator for East Tennessee, Talking to his quarterback there, trying to get things squared away as East Tennessee will have to punt the ball away. Now, here's where Georgia Southern has done some things in the past. They've blocked some punts. they got uh, blocked punts for touchdowns. Special teams here could really lift Georgia Southern. Left-footed kicker, and this is a beauty. Drives Dawson all the way back inside his 25. He's got an opening. And drags tacklers out to the 43, where Georgia Southern will take over the football. Well, USA are in the Southern Conference each and every week names the outstanding players of the week. We had three great ones last week. Terrence Rivers of the Citadel. He rushed for a career best of 217 yards in the Citadel's 52-44 win over Fermina. Junior quarterback Marco Bradham, who you're seeing in action today. You already heard he intercepted a couple of passes. One, he ran back for 72 yards. And the freshman of the year, Stan Sullivan of UT Chattanooga, he led in that rushing with 113 of the 404 yards on the ground for UT Chattanooga. Congratulations to our U.S. Air Players of the Week. First down and 10 for Georgia Southern. Robinson stumbling as he comes out of there, and he's got a fresh meet here for this charging line by East Tennessee, and now they've kind of got a little incentive going as they make the good penetration. Watch James Russell here have some penetration in the offensive line and then leg whip Kenny Robinson. Actually, <laughs> Russell goes for, he bites on the fake, he bites on the fullback, but he leg whips Robinson enough to stall him up for the rest of his teammates to come and get the glory. Mark Collins was the man who got the Final stop there. Collins, six foot, a redshirt freshman from Fort Myers, Florida. Made the stop, a loss of four on the play. Second down, 14. The lefty's back to throw again. Robbins underneath to Harris. Just as Harris got a hold of the football, you saw Abraham coming up and put a stick on him. That might have been back to the original line of scrimmage, but no more than that. So it brings up a third down play for the Eagles. Clock is a factor at 147 now for the Eagles. As they're hot down the stretch here, Georgia Southern is 39-11 in October. Game since uh, reviving their program here in 1982. Eric Russell came with a dream of building the program back up here at Georgia Southern, and did he ever. Made a dream come true, didn't he? Three national titles, the fourth one by his assistant and offensive line coach Tim Stowers. Four since 1982. They have been a dominant force in 1AA. Robinson back to throw. He's got Harris out here, but under threw him. The next Robinson man pass. that could have had a chance at it was right, but he was well short of the pass as Robinson got a lot of pressure again, and guess who was there? James Russell again, number 95. The guy is living up to uh, everything they're saying about him, and that's good for a young kid like this. He's a sophomore. He's getting better every single play, leading the conference in tackles for losses. You want a guy like that to lift your defensive line. So the two teams exchanging punts again here. And doing the punting for Georgia Southern, Eric Smith is back to do the kicking. Johnson is deep for East Tennessee. He will not come up to play this one. And quickly, they also have to get Abraham out of the way as that ball was chasing him, had it nipped off of him. And he possibly could have had it off his legs and could have given up the football. So it'll be East Tennessee's football, and they'll have it at their own 23. Well, here's a reminder that college soccer, the game, will be coming up this week, and it's going to be North Carolina State against San Diego. It's live Wednesday night right here on Sports South beginning at 7 p.m. Soccer as they head for the final four in Davidson, North Carolina, and the best of soccer is on Sports South. And two of them will be right there on Wednesday night. Hope you'll dial in for that. Don't forget also Southern Conference football tonight, 7 o'clock. Appalachian State against Marshall. Big showdown in showdown. East Tennessee, first and ten. Shotgun, Greg Ryan. His center, Gentry. Nice snap back. And speaking of nice, Edwards fumbles the football again. Georgia Southern has the ball, but the headlinesman said no. Brown calls the fumble this time. And one of the things they're going to do with Edwards, who has fumbled it a couple of times here, they're going to put some handles on that football as he takes it out beyond the 30 to about the 31 or 2-yard line. The ball definitely was free, but had the ground caused the fumble. Uh, just a quick draw play. 
Ball goes back to Ryan and hands it off to Edwards, who takes up the middle. Good blocking. Uh, Paul Carroll getting put on his back there. But right here, the, the line judge says that the ball, the ground causes the fumble. I don't know. That looks like a pretty good shot. Stockton's the one that put it on him, number 14. Looks what like a pretty good hit by Stockton to make that ball come out. I tell you what, he and Bradham have been all over this football field. And Jeff Horton on the other side for East Tennessee has been their main man, along with Russell as they try on this second down play and short yardage. They needed about two, and they may get about one. So it'll bring up a third down play. And, of course, with only 38-7, 37, 36, 35 seconds ticking away. East Carolina may be content to head to the dressing room with a two-point lead and let themselves kind of savor the moment for a moment and hope for the best in the second half. I think, I think we're going to see the ball go up in the air and deep right now. I think Mike Kevin has that, has that kind of a, that kind of thinking where let's, um, let's gash him. Let's try and put some points on the board and light it up. Now, they gave it away when Johnson got the starting blocks out here on the near sideline, huh? Nope, they go to Edwards. Play wrong. And first they down. get the first down. It will stop the clock now with six seconds, and now you might see it. Now we get up here. And they will reset it, and East Tennessee's not even going to run a play. As Greg Ryan says, now nah, let's head to the dressing room, guys. They roll the clock with five, four, three, and both teams are already heading to the dressing room. So that's going to do it for the first half of the game. An impressive half for East Tennessee coming to a tough place to win a football game. A real impressive half for East Tennessee. They're showing that they can throw the ball. They're showing that they can run the ball, that they can block them. And their defense is doing a great job of shutting down Georgia Southern right now. But uh, Tim Stowers will be heading for his locker room and certainly will be talking about what to expect there. You see Mike Cabin heading for... The opposite dressing room here for East Tennessee. And again, they come into this game with four and two record and two and one in the conference. So they're still very much in the possibility of a conference chase with a meeting with Marshall coming a little later. Speaking of Mike Kevin, let's go downstairs. Joe has corner. Joe. Thanks, Sam. I'm here with Coach Kevin. Coach, looks like the defense really stepped up, shut down the uh, high powered rushing offense of Georgia Southern. Well, we've played 30 minutes and, you know, we got 30 more minutes. So we're playing all right. We're <laughs> To me, turnovers for us right now. We're turning the ball over way too much. If we don't do that in the second half, they will have a good chance. Looks like the sophomore quarterback, Greg Ryan's picking up the pressure pretty well. Yeah, I think we're doing pretty good. We're blocking pretty good. We just got to continue doing it. Coach Cavan, back upstairs, gentlemen. Joe Paquino, thank you very much, Joe. Thank you, Mike Cavan. And again, uh, talking about turnovers, and that'll be the discussion probably on the blackboard in both of the locker rooms at halftime. East Tennessee's Buccaneers have come to Statesboro, Georgia, and on the Sports South Southern Conference Game of the Week, they've got a two-point lead on the score of 9-7 to seven here at the end of the first have been uh, critical all season long, and once again, they're playing a part here. Well, we had not had many penalties there. I think we've had two, but we had one that currently really cost us points down here on the last drive, next to the last drive. Missed the field goal and also had a nice throw down to the one-yard line. We fumbled the ball out of the end zone. So we shot ourselves in the foot offense in the first half. We made some things on defense. We kept them out of the end zone. Uh, from the majority of the half, their explosive offensive tag. We've got to really play a lot better in the second half to have a chance to win. Looks like ET ETSU is really stepping up in the defense, shutting down the run. They're doing a good job on the uh, stopping the run. Uh, we've had some good plays where we busted the trap and we've we've been able to pitch the football. And we just got we're just going to run bread and butter Georgia Southern offense this second half. Good luck in the coach in the second half, Coach Tim Stowers, Georgia Southern, Sam. Thank you very much. Well, if they're going to run the Georgia Southern offense, East Tennessee better buckle on the chin straps. Let's take a look at the highlights, and Georgia Southern struck first with a nice little pitch. Big pitch out to Marlowe Wortham for the run and the first score. And this, this kind of looked like Georgia Southern was going to dominate this game a little bit. Good time possession. But on the other side, East Tennessee's throwing game has been very good. Just a great throw and a pitch, which they throw and a catch, which they've been doing all day long. Very, very balanced attack from East Tennessee State. Difference in the game is a leaning field goal from 46 by Lafferty. I tell you, this field goal comes a hair from being bad, but they get it and it lifts East Tennessee State almost to a new level. Well, the one you talk about is Harris's fumble in the end zone. As you can see, how wide open he was on this throw from Robinson. Had just a step in, he got knocked from behind and loses the ball. It's a great strip right here if you watch um, Scott. Scott, Mike Scott, right? Strip the ball down. The ball rolls. Rolls out of the side of the end zone, and it turns back over to East Tennessee State. It's tough, really tough call on Georgia State. In that so. situation, side of the end zone, it comes out to the three, back of the end zone, it would come to the 20. And then Ryan underneath, an interception, and they get the big interception by Georgia Southern, but it led to a missed field goal. And coming up, Andy Britt couldn't turn it into points for Georgia Southern, and they trail at the halftime break with a score of 9-7. to seven. Statistically, here in the first half of the game at Paulson Stadium as the Eagles come back out. 
And taking a look at the total number of plays, and you made mention of time of possession. Not that much in time of possession, but look at the plays. 40 to 26 in favor of East Tennessee, and the number, obviously, 255 to 190 on the uh, number of yardage. You can't let an offense like the Buccaneers have the ball that many times and that many opportunities to move it and score. And that's what's happening right now. They've got a chart. And it's not so much Georgia Southern's defense keeping it out of their hands. It's Georgia Southern's offense got to control the ball and really run the clock down. Just a light, wispy cloud cover is starting to come over to dull the sunshine just a bit on this late fall afternoon as we near the 530 mark. And, of course, with the newly installed lights here at Paulson Stadium, we'll just glide right into the twilight as they've already been turned on, as you can see. And it'll make it a delightful afternoon to watch football. Actually got a little warm up to nearly 80 degrees today, but it's cooling down very nicely right now. And earlier in the uh, earlier in the game, we talked about there was a humidity factor here. What was it, like 75, something like that, down there on the field earlier? And that usually puts things in Georgia Southern's favor because it wears down the other team. What we were talking about earlier is both these teams got to play 60 minutes. And let's see if that has any effect on wearing these teams, teams down. East Tennessee State last week having an off week, getting a chance to rest up, getting a chance to really work on fundamentals. They look very, very good in this first half so far. Well, you may recall that Georgia Southern has been rather porous defensively in the fourth quarter. And does that come back to haunt them today, or do they get the points? It pays the way as a bouncing kick will come to the near sideline to Russell. Russell had an opening out to the 35, and just as he reaches the 35, maybe the 36-yard line, he's hammered. And coming up to make the stop, and a fine stop that time at the 36 was Chuck Sutton. And it's going to be first down and 10 to go. They'll move it to the 37 where Georgia Southern and Kenny Robinson. What a story this young man is painting here at Georgia Southern. They've had a long line of some outstanding quarterbacks, and I really think this one is going to be one of the better ones. Just a freshman, a red shirt coming out from Concord, North Carolina. The start at the beginning of the year, Joe Dupree is healthy. He's ready to go, but Kenny Robinson has the hot hand. When I asked Daryl Gass, the quarterback coach, earlier about, well, is, is, it, is Kenny the quarterback of the future? Is that why you keep him in? He said, no, he's the quarterback of now. He's got the hot hand. We're going to keep going with him. Well, the now back trying to get the pitch outside was Chris Wright. And guess who? Jeff Horton, who's been all over the field. Number 46 makes the stop for East Tennessee. They gain absolutely zero on the play. Strung that one out down the line of scrimmage nicely. One of the things East Tennessee State's done on their defense this past week, really due to injuries, was they moved Jeff Horton from strong safety over to cornerback and moved a linebacker, number 20, Morrow Hankerman, to strong safety to really help the run support. And it's been showing tonight. They have really stopped this, the long, drawn-out plays and the, the big runs by Georgia Southern. Second down, still 10 yards to go. They give it to the first back through. And running with a full head of steam is Chad Holmes out of Griffin, Georgia. 5'10", 202, a junior, a two-year letterman. Getting in there and getting an opportunity from the third string fullback spot, getting an opportunity to run, and he's running well. Watch the middle three, the full block between Franklin Stevens, the center, Isaac Farrell, and Joy Cushing, the two guards, which opens up, opens up that hole for Chad Holmes, runs it right up the middle. Gain of nine in the play, third down and one. Georgia Southern again won the toss of the coin to start the game and elected to defer to the second half, and thus their first possession of the second half is Robinson down the line of scrimmage. And guess who? Getting on top of him is James Russell. And Russell from San Augustine, Florida, who already leads the league with 13 tackles for a loss, is right at the line of scrimmage and may have dropping back for another yard loss. They rule it at the line of scrimmage. James Russell, he, he goes in the program, it says he's 6'3", 220. We are talking to one of the East Tennessee coaches earlier. They said he's not 220. He's lower than that. But this guy plays like he's about 6'9", and 250. Well, he's all over the football field, as you see. Good look at this young man. And guess what? He's only a sophomore. He's only a sophomore. Oh, He'll be around for a long time. Alex Nash, the great All-American here at Georgia Southern, was that same kind of defensive end. He was all over the field. And certainly, Russell is playing on his turf as they may have run out the time on the play clock before they got the kickoff and Eric Smith is now talking to his deep snapper that time Stuart Dixon to snap the football he actually had raised his legs and also had patted himself on the chest saying okay I'm ready give me the football and they didn't get it off in time offense still fourth down so a fourth down they'll use up five more yards which will back Smith up Eric Smith can that's not gonna bother him much a little below his average of uh, the season, only averaging 33 on his four kicks. 36 yards so far, his longest of the afternoon. And Jeff Johnson is the deep man back for East Tennessee, stands just outside his own 25-yard line at the 28. Smith had plenty of time to really boom this one in. 
Johnson backpelling for the fair catch and will make it at the 13 yard line and that won't hurt Mr. Smith's average as he pans East Tennessee back inside the 20 yard line again. So again, Eric Smith does the job. Now Georgia Southern will try to turn it over to their defense while East Tennessee tries to get offensively great up in the second half. Quano as we greet you here in Statesboro, Georgia on homecoming. And the Eagle cheerleaders trying to keep things going here as their team trails by two points on the strength of a 46-yard field goal by Mike Lafferty in the first half. Edwards, who's been the workhorse for East Tennessee, now his 13th carry, gains another couple of yards for 81 total for the day, moves it out to about the 15-yard line here for the Buccaneers. And here's where defense, we're finally seeing Paul Carroll kind of step up. We really haven't talked about That's him right. much, and he is the heart and soul of this Georgia Southern defense. And typically, as he goes, this defense goes also. There he is getting his nose in. And that's what George Southern needs to do is stop him. Make, don't give him that four or five yards per carry. By the way, Eric Smith did indeed do his job the last time. A 45-yard punt is the reason East Tennessee's having to take over deep in their own territory as Ryan rolling with a pocket. Caught and dropped from behind. And Michael Morris makes the stop. Morris, who already has four sacks on the year, picks up another one there. He has 29 tackles on the year, and this fine senior three-year letterman just kind of went with the pocket and makes the stop. Sam, this is that rollout waggle play we had seen earlier, and Michael Morris does nothing but, but really defeats Brett Dotson to go ahead and really just personal conviction, getting back there, beating his man and making the sack, getting his name over the intercom. You know, you were making mention early in the first half, three, four, five count at most. Uh, they gave him as much time as he really needed, and he just couldn't get the ball. Good secondary right. coverage. Good secondary coverage. Third down, 10 yards to go, and now the play clock may have wound down on East Tennessee as they throw a flag across the way. And we'll see what this is going to bring about at the 13-yard line. Here's our referee, Mr. Buckner. Dead ball, delay a game, offense, third down. Play clock does wind down, march off five, third down and 15 now for East Tennessee. Sam, you mentioned a real interesting thing about pass, uh, about defensive secondary there, doing a, doing a good job, there's nobody, nobody's open, and there's the, it ruins the timing pattern. Tommy Spangler was talking about that, that we, they've got to get, usually typically there's a lot of pressure on the secondary to stop these guys, they've got to get pressure on the quarterback so that they take the pressure off the defensive secondary, but that time was a little turned around. Williams and Branch in the corner as going back again is Ryan, he tried to hand the football off as they try to get a little draw on it, and oh! over the top of them again. They got the inside fill and the linebackers, down lineman Brian Sellers all come and the defense brings the crowd to their feet. Brian Sellers just shoots through the gap here. Good overhand swim technique. Catches Woodrow Dixon deep in the backfield. Beautiful defensive play. By the way, Georgia Southern up on the line of scrimmage. They have already blocked four kicks this year. Two punts, a PAT, and a field goal try. They set a school record or tie it last year with eight blocks, all of them on block punts. But they do get it out of there as Collins booms a beauty to midfield. Dawson to the 40, to the 30. And finally is knocked down at the 26-yard line. And Georgia Southern now after a 45-yard punt and a fine run back by Dexter Dawson will be in business and trying to take the lead. We're homecoming at Georgia Southern down by two. Well, Dawson has certainly given uh, Georgia Southern a little, little lift here with a fine 20-yard return on this 45-yard punt. He's not, getting a, he's not getting a lot of chance to catch the ball out in the open field, but he's doing a great job showing his moves out here with the punt return. Great run. Tell you what, if my hips move like that, I'd have back trouble the rest of the year. I'll tell you that. It's first and 10 for Georgia Southern. Robinson, nice little pivot move, but he looked to make the pitch or at least to try to cut inside. and. Penetrating in on a fine pinch down move that time as they got Mark Collins, number 51. He's filling in for Mark Hush, who was in on a lot of plays in the first half, but Collins has really been big in the second Sam, half. Sam, watch the mechanics of Kenny Robinson. He has to go to his right, pivot all the way around, go back to the go back to his left, while Stacy Moses and the rest of the crowd up there, uh, Isaac Farrell tries to keep this defensive line of East Tennessee State back so he can start his start his motion to make the pitch. Number 79, Curtis Eason was also in there. Here's the quick delay handoff right up the middle as they get him a draw and running to the end zone and trying to score as he take it and he does Holmes 29 yard run by Chad Holmes as he takes it in for the touchdown and Georgia Southern has come back to take the lead 
watch the middle three or watch the fold block or the, or the trap block. Like we said before, East Tennessee State commits so hard upfield, they, they kind of over-execute. Great kick-out block by Joey Cushing. Chad Holmes does all the rest, just toting the mail right into the end zone. Reed Haley will try to add the extra point. How many times have you seen a player playing in the shadow of another player, an injury happens, and you finally get your chance to shine? And that's what Holmes doing is Reed just barely got that one through the uprights. It ain't pretty, but it counts. But it counts. And Georgia Southern adds seven to the board. But East Tennessee is clawing with them here. 14 to nine as we move in to 9.28 to go in the third period on homecoming at Georgia Southern. Turns out just like this as Georgia Southern little trap and off to the races. Great fold block by Franklin Stevens, also Joe Cushing's to spring Chad Holmes. Isaac Farrell makes a really nice little fake, fake block like he's going to pass to to hold the linebacker there. That really kind of opens up the second level. Let's Chad walk on into the end zone. You know, an interesting part about Georgia Southern in their seven games, they've had seven different different leading rushers. Chad Holmes is trying to become the first to rush as the leading rusher two games for Georgia Southern this year. As you see him touching it down in the end zone and no run back coming out of there by Lindsay, they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line for East Tennessee. First down and 10 to go. Sam, they do share the wealth for Georgia Southern. Seven players have rushed for, oh, let's see, yeah, seven players have rushed for 100 yards or more this season. Mm -hmm. So everybody's getting a chance right. to show what they can do. Some of it's due to injury. Others, do, others opportunities are coming because they're just playing really, really well. But everybody's stepping up here to try and make something happen for Georgia Southern. Well, right now they're happening to a 14-9 lead, but East Tennessee and the Buccaneers, they played a whale of a game here in Statesboro, and they're now within five as they're down by five here, and back goes Ryan. Look at the time he's got to throw to Johnson. Catches it right at the 30. He's thrown back to the 29. It'll be shy of a first down by about a yard, a gain of nine. And again, they go to their bread and butter. Sam, watch the offensive line here in the defensive line. Well, we don't get a catch on film, but there is some serious fighting going on down in the <laughs> trenches, trenches for, for pass protection and pass rush. This game is getting very, very heated down deep. Defensive stop there made by Williams. By the way, Derek Austin is the man that Williams has replaced in the corner as Johnson, you see, needs six receptions to surpass. Ron Hillman is the all-time reception leader in the history of the Buccaneers. Edwards going to go nowhere. Penetration underneath by Thomas Plant out of Fort Valley, Georgia, Macon County High School. And he was the one that penetrated, and then he got some help from his buddies to stop Edwards, and that has not been an easy chore this, has, this game. Has not been easy at all. But watch Thomas Plant. He comes through. He disrupts the play for for on um, Brian Edwards after he gets the ball. But watch, watch this. He gets back up and comes to get another <laughs> stick on him out of your corner. Boom. I want him. I want him bad. <laughs> <laughs> got to love the intensity of these two teams today. And I tell you what's burning is the stomach of both of these coaches. I mean, they get in the game. Stowers for Georgia Southern. Mike Cavan for East Tennessee. This is Southern Conference football, folks, and it's a dandy today. Beatty, who was shaken up, and he may get shaken again as it takes six of the Eagles to bring him down on a little flare pattern out to the near side, and Beatty takes it for a first down just shy of the 35. Sam, this is what they coach. This is what Tommy Spangler, defensive coordinator for Georgia Southern coaches week in and week out. If somebody catches the ball downfield, one of you, Francis, hold him up, hold him up, because there's a lot of other blue jerseys coming. Watch this. One, two, three, four, five. Here comes the swarm. That's your, that's how you play defense. Pursuit to the football. They have produced 25 All-Americans here at Georgia Southern as Ryan throwing it out. And just as the catch is made on the far side, the legs are taken right out from under. The receiver on the far side, and he is decked there quickly. Number 28 making the catch over there. That is going to be uh, B.J. Adigan. And look how quickly he's hit here. We, we were talking a little earlier about Greg Ryan. He makes all the right decisions. He knows how to audible. He knows how to run this offense. His one fault may be that his ball floats up a little bit. His receivers have to come up off the ground, and they get hit pretty hard because of that. Seven-yard gain in the play. They give to the second back through is Dixon. Woodrow tries to claw for yardage as the Mays High School grad in Atlanta will gain close to the necessary yardage but may have missed it by about a yard sent of the line led again by Paul Carroll by the way you can hear several names certainly from Mike Cavan and for Tim Stower starting to come to the fore offensively and maybe more defensively today than we had expected maybe that are very much in the line for our first union player of the game third down conversions you see the number Georgia 7 0 for 6 2 for 8 for East Tennessee Edwards has it and some. 
Fumble in midair. Picked off and run back the other way. Morris has it. And takes it out of bounds as the flag goes down right at midfield. And Edwards again has coughed up the football for East Tennessee. And their defense has to come right back into the field after the ball was caught in midair by Michael Morris in the run back. I'm not really sure what the what the penalty is going to be, Sam, but it could be clipping on Lee Brooks. But he had a great peel back block and just took somebody's shoes off. But just a really hedgy play by Mike Morris to come up with the football, turn and run up field. You love to see the big guys running with the ball. They never get a chance to do that, you know? You were talking about the defense swarming in Tommy Spangler's defense. Certainly did it there, knocking the ball away from Edwards. And it is a hold on Georgia Southern. The illegal use of the hands, the technical term for it here. And the penalty will be stepped off on the run back. Illegal block in the back on the blue team during the return. Ten yard penalty. It's follow the foul. It'll be first down that way. So it's first down for the Eagles. Let's watch it again here. A great play for the third con third down conversion. Big play by Edwards up the field. Oh, nice. Danny Brett puts his helmet right on the ball, and it happens to pop up a little serendipity right into Michael Morris's hands, who turns around and goes, let's see if we can see the peelback block by Brooks right here. Right there, you saw yep. him. Take him right in the top of your screen. Robinson and his unit now in the lead by five, 14 to nine. Trying to get their offense cranked again as we near the end of the third period. 6.13 to go in our game for you Southern Conference football fans. Don't forget later at 7 o'clock on Sports South, it is maybe another one of those games of the year. Appalachian State rolling out the red carpet for the thundering herd of Marshall. Well, great expectations for this Georgia Southern since finishing 6-5 in 1988. Southern has won at least seven games each and every season. That included, of course, uh, several national championship years, the most recent one in 1990 for Tim Stiles when they finished the year at 12 and three. And Georgia Southern has to continue a winning streak right now. If they want to, they've got to try to wind up seven and four if they want any kind of chance at all to have a playoff berth for the uh, It looks like Kenny Robinson is getting checked out. Maybe he's got an illegal weapon in there, huh? Checking to see if he's uh, what brass knuckles he got something on the inside of his uh, leg of his pants there it, in wrestling They call it the foreign object. That's right checking for the foreign object <laughs> Whether that may be a roll of pennies or something <laughs> I think hey. what they were actually checking it was a red stain and of course the first thing they check for in college football if it is blood And if it's blood that player has to be re re Placed in the lineup and the equipment exchange and they're satisfied that it's not here's Robinson running out of trouble the lefty throwing. Worthen has it. There's a flag down back up field, or actually up field. And Robinson really took a hit from uh, once again Russell, James Russell, who really decked him. But the catch was made, and it's enough for the first down. But there's a flag down at the 30 up field, where there was a pattern being run there by Harris and being defended by the deep men in that situation. I believe it was Hankerson, number 20. And the most most likely situation, the ball will go up to where the penalty was at. Where Harris, where Harris got bumped by the defensive back. It's defensive holding is the call. Let's see where they'll finally spot it down. Now the spot of the ball is the 49-yard line in East Tennessee territory. Great heads-up move. Now this this shows you that Kenny Robinson has really become a veteran because he gets caught up in a little bit of pressure. He ducks out of it, comes around, finds an open receiver, Marlo Worthen. It's a, makes a great play, and of course they get the uh, they get the extra icing on the topping with the penalty. They do indeed, and the step off is from where the ball was down at the 49, so they'll take it to the 39, a 10-yard step off, and the first down for Georgia Southern. So another major break for the Eagles on that as they come up with the opportunity on a little swing pass out here on the near side. And Kenny Robinson brings his team back to the attack, and they go straight up the middle to Holmes. And Holmes tries to gain some yardage. Almost had his helmet taken off with his head inside. As Eason, number 79, says, hmm, look what I got. Well, you got to watch these defensive linemen. I played against them a long time, and they'll do all kind of things that aren't within the rules, unlike offensive linemen, of course. You, know, you don't hold. Eason's one of those freshmen, one of the many freshmen out of Jacksonville. They're starting Russell's a sophomore. Eason's a freshman. Uh, Boskett is a senior redshirt, and on the other side, Hush was a junior, but the man that's replaced in Collins, number 51, is a freshman redshirt. That's their four-down lineman. Robinson finally getting James Russell to knock him down at the 30-yard line, rolls his way to the 29, maybe enough for a first down. 
for you. Know, you know, this flex bone just fits exactly the, the skills of Robinson, I tell you. I'm telling you, and this is what Tim Stowers said with Joe Paquino down the field, we're going to run Georgia Southern style football. He said in a little bit deeper draw than that. Georgia Southern style football. We're going to run this option. Kenny Robinson did a great job faking the pitch and ducking up inside for the first down. 11 rushes for 26 yards as they're going to bring the chain across. Yeah. And you can see it's just it's short by about a half point. the length of the football. Could have swore I got that first. So it's Robinson again trying to gain some yardage on the little option, the flex bone as they call it. I thought it was interesting talking to the East Tennessee defensive people. They say, hey, it's almost like the run and shoot as much as the as the wishbone when they're running it all the time but the run and shoot because of the mobility of robinson exactly and the, the only difference between this and the run and shoot really is the fact that georgia southern is predominantly a ground team where the run and shoot really is meant to be a passing type of an offense but out of this flex bone you've got the option you can keep it you can get hand it to the fullback you can fake it to the fullback or you can pitch it out to the slot back or you can set up the same thing and drop back and throw it so you really got you got every combination possible available to you and robinson's the kind of kid that can do that Robinson takes a man in motion. Now Worthen stands, and Robinson just takes it right in behind the center. Stevens, Farrell, and Cushing. That's from guard to guard, and those three guys are third-year Letterman and seniors, uh, three-year Letterman and seniors, and certainly a lot of experience right up the gut of that offensive line. Watch, watch the middle three here, which really is the strength of this offensive line. Franklin Stevens leading the bunch of me and the captain of that line. And I told you he got the first down, just took him one more play. I did indeed. First Kenny down. Dunk it up. Good they job. move it just inside the 20. Right at about the 19 and a half. Georgia Southern leading by five with 339 to go in the third period. And this is exactly what Tim Styles. Remember the line he gave Joe when he came out of the locker room? We're coming out and running Georgia Southern football. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. That's what they're doing. And they're chewing up the time on the clock. They, they came back out. They put some points on the board that gave them a little bit of a cushion here. And now they're chewing up the clock and they're controlling the ball. I don't think, I don't think it's the humidity now that things are cooling off. <laughs> Last year, this club at Georgia Southern went 10 and 3, 11th team in NCAA Division I to win a conference title in their first year. The last two teams were Florida State in 92 in the ACC and Fresno State in the WAC Conference. This Robinson's going for it all, and Chris Wright just can't stretch out to get it. Just let him too much in the end zone, but he had him on a perfect pattern, but it's incomplete. They'll bring it back out, and it'll be spotted again at around the 22 yard line. Third down, and they'll need still about seven yards for the first down. By the way, we'd like to send out our congratulations to the queen, if you will, on homecoming. Carmelita Whitaker has been named as the queen of homecoming here, and they have a king this year. And Carlton, they call him Speedy Dixon? Swift. Oh, Swift. Swift. Well, same difference, huh? Come on. No, Swift. That's, okay. That's your handle. Our congratulations to Carlton and Carmelita, king and queen of homecoming here at Georgia Southern. Eagles trying to chew up some uh, yardage, and now they're going to bring up a fourth down play. Will this bring in uh, Reed Haley? It does. Tim Styers wasted no time in signaling out for his place kicker. And one of the things he also wants to do in this situation is really kind of put a little confidence back in Reed Haley. He's been kind of struggling as of late. Hit the big uh, field goal to win it last year. Missed uh, one from 33 yards early in the game. And as they spot this football down, the kick is another line drive to the left, and he's going to miss that one. So his time is definitely off. As again, uh, Eric Smith got a fairly decent snap, got it down, but Reed just over the top and hooks it to the left. And you can see how disappointed he is he comes to the sideline here. Very unnatural for Reed Haley. Um, his knee must really be bothering because he, here's a guy that is, is really chilly. What I mean by that is he's got ice water in his veins. He can make the real clutch kicks. He can hit the big kicks. Just does, doesn't not look like himself today. Well, his crew for the television here on Sports South, all of the folks enjoying quite a lunch this afternoon. Our crew meals provided by Legend Bar and Grill of Statesboro. By the way, they are the home of the best pizza in the borough. The best pizza in the borough. The best. we got to try that for sure. They, of course, have top-notch entertainment that will be continuing all through the next few weeks. For the best food and entertainment, try the Legends Bar and Grill located adjacent to Georgia Southern University. Greg Ryan going to the attack for East Tennessee on a first down play. Goes right back to Jeff Johnson. And Johnson, you saw the graphic, is now within five of becoming the all-time reception leader in the history of East Tennessee State University. Ron Hillman holds that record with 115 catches. And right now, Jeff Johnson is on a mission. I think Marco Bradham's going to pick one off here in just a little bit. 
he, he made a great break on the ball that last time, a little bit about what we were talking before. You know it's either going to Beatty or it's going to Johnson. Made a break on the ball for Johnson, almost had to pick. Jerani Rollins, number four, is checked into the game, looks underneath this. Ryan has to run out of there on this second down play. He'll get past the line of scrimmage and maybe only a yard, and that'll be out all as the room ran out. Derek Reeves out of Augusta Butler High School, number 89, was one of those that got over and cut off the play nicely for Georgia Southern. Keep an eye on number 63, Jay Pittman, that holds up 89, Derek Reeves, as he starts to scramble right there as they go out of your screen. It really allows um, Greg Ryan to, to break for the ball and get on upfield. So he salvaged the play. You saw some good help as Scott Davis, number 55, and also number 91, Michael Morris, who's been the man of the moment, is in there. There's... There's uh, Rollins, who's come in, 10 receptions for 71 yards, averaging seven a catch, and they could use seven right now as the Buccaneers have a third down play. They're throwing it out, going to Beatty, and Beatty has another first down. Not as picture perfect as the last one, but you saw the blitz coming, and Ryan picked it up and dumped it inside to one of his top receivers. First down, Buccaneers. That's where a, a quarterback and his receivers really have got to be on the same page. You're going to watch them right here. They both see the blitz coming. They both break it off. Chris Beatty catches the ball, gets the first down. Beatty, by the way, scored 20 points against the Citadel two weeks ago, and that was the most since 1957 by a Buccaneer player. 1957, Piggy Nolan scored 24, and Dennis Bailey in 1933 also scored 24 in a game for a Buccaneer record, but it was close by Beatty last uh, two weeks ago. Edwards, they're still handing the ball to him and hoping he's got some stick on those hands as he carries it out to the 40-yard line. A good gain in the play of six, second down and four. Mike Cavan knows that his offense can get in gear, and right now they're hoping to stay that way. The pitch to Brian Edwards just tries to make the corner and get the turn, but lowers that shoulder. He's a big, strong running back. If you're going to bring him down, you better make sure you wrap him up pretty good. Clock winding down to 2-1, and that's it. And the third period is in the books. So after being down by two at halftime, 9-7, Georgia Southern has got a score. And they do that with Chad Holmes from 29 yards away, and they've got a 14-9 lead as we head for the final quarter. But again, in the last two weeks, Georgia Southern, Georgia Southern with a score of 14-9 as we begin the fourth and final period of this uh, twilight game as we have gone from the bright sunshine now to some hazy clouds and the twilight starting to set in here in Statesboro. Sam Smith along with Ben Up and Joe Paquino. Glad you could join us here on Sports South Southern Conference Game of the Week. And a pass that's going to be short by about a yard of a first down. As again, they angle it out to Beatty, who has suddenly come on. Here's a uh, final score. Alcorn State has defeated uh, Southern University 41-37. Interesting part of that is Steve Air McNair continues to roll for Alcorn State. Let's remind you that we've got an opportunity for a triple header coming up uh, next week right here on Sports South. Temple and Pittsburgh will kick it off at 12 noon and then... You'll have a chance to take a look at Alcorn State and Steve Ayer McNair at Sanford. And then Washington and California will wrap up the Blitz at 7.30. The triple header next week right here on Sports South. Greg Ryan back in the pocket. Starts to break down. And it finally goes down. Good defensive play. Charlie Bird, who actually was the starting left uh, end here when we were here before against Marshall, been replaced by who else? Michael Morris. And... Now they've got them both in there doing the job. Great pass rush, good, just a good, strong pass rush by Georgia Southern. What Greg Ryan needs to do is kind of step back up in that pocket a little bit more, fade out to his left to try to avoid that. But I mean, what can you do when you're going to get when you're going to get smothered like that? By the way, an open week for East Tennessee last week. They're not uh, all that good after an open week. They've lost four in a row. Last win after an open week was 1989, coming from behind, 35-33, to defeat the Citadel, and they'll have to come from behind again today. Here's a pass to the outside. Did he make the catch? Looks like he did. What a great catch by Beatty as he falls out of bounds in the open arms over there. And uh, Danny Britt was right on top of him, but Beatty is now starting to step up as their main man. I'll tell you what, these two guys are amazing. Beatty and Johnson, they just don't slow down. Well, watch, watch the pump fake by Greg Ryan here, almost uh, a, la Joe, uh, a la Johnny Unitas. <laughs> Freezes everybody. Beatty goes up. Great vertical jump, catches the ball, and the reason it's a, that it's a reception is he's driven out of bounds by the defensive man. And you saw the foot down before he went out of bounds, and 
A handoff right up the middle. East Tennessee now just trying to keep him honest with Dixon on the run. And again, Ben Hutt had pointed out early the offense of Mike Cavan almost to the point of the run is set up by the pass, which they do so well at East Tennessee right now. Really the same philosophy that Bill Walsh used to use with the 49ers out in San Francisco when they were winning all those championships. You do things when you got a guy like Montana that can throw the ball that well and receivers like like Rice that can catch Jerry Rice that can catch it. You go ahead and you use that and you push everybody back and then when they when they're back far enough you come up, bring it back down and you run the ball. Number 28 Adigan is underneath. They instead go outside and pitch the ball to Robert Robinson number 82 and he makes the reception upfield and now as you're looking for Johnson and Beatty they come with another couple of receivers. More members of the core not as not as well known as Johnson and Beatty but just as effective. Runs his pattern gets it open makes a really nice catch. From Decatur Georgia Tucker High School. Robinson makes the catch 5'11", 160 a senior is now over 100 yards and receiving this year he's also caught a TD pass from Greg Ryan Ryan back to throw you see on the first time play has a lot of time likes to go in and take the hit from Paul Carroll who puts him down Joe Paprano working with us down on the field Joe what do you got for us pal well Sam I was speaking of Tim Stowers earlier in the week he said there's really no way to slow down this fast break attack of ETSU Tommy Spangler is giving them a variety of looks, and Johnson and Beatty are just keeping making the plays. They're paying the price. The Georgia Southern secondary is putting hits on left and right. You hear him on the sidelines. You're probably hearing him upstairs with the sophomore quarterback, Greg Ryan. Is a, he's feeling the pressure, handling it well in the pocket, and having a nice methodical drive right here late in the fourth. East Tennessee's Greg Ryan. Thank you, Joe. We have a second down and four. The pitch to the outside. Edwards. Turns the corner. Bradham was there fighting off uh, the block that came out from the corner and finally came in to knock him down at the 10. That'll be enough for the first down if the play holds up. By the way, Furman is a winner in the Southern uh, Conference this uh, day, 28-11 over VMI. And Western Carolina also joins the winners, 53-15 over UT Chattanooga. Citadel out of the conference, losing an Army. Final score 25-24, and the other big game going tonight, of course, is Appalachian State hosting Marshall right here on Sports South. The Southern Conference, big showdown tonight, and this one is a big one as well for both these clubs. See the numbers on Edwards, just shy of 100 yards. First down for the Buccaneers. They're trying to wrestle the lead back again, and Edwards has it to the five. Touchdown, East Tennessee. This is Southern Conference football. And the last team to score wins. <laughs> last team to score wins. I'm telling you, whoever has the ball last may just do that. So an 11-yard run by Edwards, who has had trouble hanging on to the football, but not this time. He carries it in. Great push by the offensive line of East Tennessee State. You'll see every white jersey just push the blue jerseys back, opens up the hole for Brian Edwards, who's been a horse all day long, goes in for the score. Edwards with his third touchdown run of the year. Gaining right at 600 yards for the year. They're going to try to add a deuce to this total. The score is 15-14. A deuce, of course, would take it only to a field goal for a tie. Ryan throwing it out to Johnson. Johnson at the ones. Not going to get there. Danny Britt was the first man to reach him out. He did get the ball. Oh, they said he broke the plane. He went in and broke the plane. He's wow. Extends his hands and pushes the ball over the over the line of scrimmage. So a big play that will be discussed by Georgia Southern, certainly applauded by East Tennessee, and the two-point conversion works. And the Buccaneers go up by three, 17 to 17-14 in the fourth. Bulls has been their main man. Fantastic surge by the East Tennessee State offensive line to break Brian Edwards right into the, right into the end zone for the touchdown. Now the two-point conversion, does he break the plane? Well, i tell you what, he... He gets the ball. It's a great catch by Beatty. Has the presence of mind to extend his hands over the line of scrimmage, over into the end zone. You can't see it right here, but the ref shoots his hands up in the air, signaling, signaling the score. The thing you got to do if you're a defensive player, you got to slap the ball out yeah. of his hands, cause the fumble to, to nullify that. But they gave him the two points, and the thing is, in college football, you don't, they won't take him off the board. Look at they Edwards. He's now board. becoming a candidate for our first junior player of the game with that 119 yards. And a long kick goes to Chris Wright. Georgia Southern now down by three. There's a flag down. There will be a block in the back as Wright takes it out to about the 27 or 8 yard line. And uh, just behind the play, number 31, Chad Holmes for one. And the other player, number 29, that is going to be uh, Jonathan Richardson, both, I believe, throwing illegal blocks behind the play. And the flags are down right at the 20-yard line, and the officials, along with 
Our referee Ron Buckner are discussing it right now. It is on the run back and will be stepped off here against Georgia Southern. Good run back by Chris Wright. Got a full head of steam, but got a little help as he got around the corner there. Illegal block in the back on the return against the blue team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. It'll be first down. So they'll mark it from the 20 back to the 10. Let's see at the bottom of your screen if we can pick these up here, Ben. Chris Wright does a great job just getting up the field. There you go. You see the, see the block in the back right there. And there's another one yeah. right there by Chad Holmes. Trying to get uh, Jeff Horton out of there. Good, good calls by the official on that. So now Georgia Southern back at their own 10-yard line, and now they trail by three. And a little shaky with their field goal kicker, Reed Haley, that could tie this game. So they probably are certainly hoping they can get in. And Jeff Horton defensively will not let them get outside as Wortham has turned back on the corner and dropped right at the line of scrimmage at the 10. I tell you what, Sam, Joe Paquino was telling us earlier when he was talking about the injury to the knee to, uh, to Reed Haley that if it comes down to a close game and it's a field goal, that might be the deciding factor. Sure. The fact that his, his motion is off, his mechanics is off, and he's missed a couple field goals here tonight. And his confidence is definitely down right now. Yeah, his confidence is definitely needs a nice bag. Second down, 10 yards to go. Dawson, dangerous receiver out on the near side. Horton lining up on the far side, one-on-one -on, -one on Harris. And back they go, and quickly a penetration move right up the middle, and they drop him for a loss. And that looks like it's going to be Mark, uh, Mark Hush. Hush. It is Mark Hush from Shelby, North Carolina. Boy, he was in the backfield before the ball was ever snapped, it appeared. I tell you, they were talking about how quick this wow. East Tennessee State on defensive line is, and he must have, he must have either judged the snap count, the cadence, or something to get off the ball that quickly and catch Kenny Robinson in the backfield. Nothing special, just lined the gap and blew through it. Nice play by Hush. A big play for East Tennessee, and now Georgia Southern is faced with a third down and 14. Again, at their own six-yard line, they need to come with a little magic right here. And they try to go with a running game straight ahead. And they're still on their feet, and what a great carry by Holmes as he gets the first down. Oh, my, Chad Holmes, to the applaud of this crowd, has just gotten his club out of a deep hole on a third down and 14 with a nice 18-yard run. You're, show, you're showing a team, right now you're, showing, you're seeing a team with a lot of personal pride. They're doing nothing but, but trying to get out of that hole, make sure that their hopes and their chances don't die here at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Great run by Chad Holmes. Well, nearly 16,000 turning out on this great uh, Saturday afternoon for football in Georgia. Chris Wright in motion. Here comes the end around to uh, Dexter Dawson. He pitches it back to Robinson. Robinson will take it for about seven. And you talk about a little razzle, Whoa, razzle. they try every kind play. of flea thicker and everything else, and it almost worked. <laughs> Dude, typically, you won't see something quite like that because you're changing the ball that often. Only a bad thing can happen, talking about a fumble. But let's, let's watch this thing go back and forth about three different times. There's the pitch, the handoff for the reverse. Dexter Dawson runs around. Look at the pitch relationship. Pitches it back out to the quarterback, Kenny Robinson. Nice block on the corner, nice cut block on the corner, too. Very Open nice, very nice done. I believe that was Harris that came back and threw the block. Well, it's a second down and three yards to go for Georgia Southern. Block not a factor right now at 9.33 to go in the game. Robinson drugged down from behind by James Russell. James Russell doing nothing but shooting those gaps. I tell you what, a couple of the guys that are in the lead now for my first junior player of the game have to be Russell and certainly Jeff Horton defensively for East Tennessee. They say that, that James Russell is so quick, a lot of times he looks like he's offside. In that particular instance, he gets across the line, checks the fake for, to the fullback, turns around, pivots, and still makes the tackle on Kenny Robinson. By the way, Chad Holmes is now only 16 yards away from matching his career high of 98 that he had just last week. So he's having quite a game as they pitch it to right. Right in front of Holmes, uh, behind Holmes is blocked. Takes it to the 35 and is knocked out of bounds. But another first down for Georgia Southern. And the wish are the flex bone is starting to flex the muscle now for Georgia Southern. Too, it looks like that little razzle dazzle play kind of kind of opened things up and made, made these guys from East Tennessee State get back to basics, playing their assignments. First down, Georgia Chris Wright doing nothing but just turning the corner here, getting some good blocks and following his blocks. Watch a little quick spin move here. Showing a lot of heart to get the extra yards. By the way, a couple of surprising scores. Virginia leading North Carolina 27-17 in the third, and Mississippi at Alabama leading the Crimson Tide 10 to nothing in the third period. Here, our score, 17-14, East Tennessee. 
Georgia Southern have won three of their last four games and would certainly hate to give up a victory here on their home field. They have been almost invincible on this field, losing only seven times, but two of them have come this year. Tim Stowers saying, come on, let's not let too much of that clock wind away as it's down to eight and a half to go, and they're down by a field goal. And you have a feeling the field goal is not what they want, certainly a, a touchdown to win it. They want six. But even they're uncomfortable even trying to tie the game with Reed Haley and the swelling of the left knee. The last play is exactly what George Southern's got to keep doing. They've got to make big first and third downs. What a nice misdirection play that was, and they give it to Wright. Right on the near side, and a nice open field tackle by Sutton out of Greenville, Mississippi, number five, comes up to make the stop, and the senior really played that well and knocks him down what looked like to be a big game. When you get that good yardage on first down, where, where you turn it into second, six, second, five, it opens up your whole package so much more where they've got to watch what you can do because then you can throw or run. Here, Wright just takes out the corner, just the, the pure Georgia Southern option. Works hard and gets the first down. Wide receivers out there again. Harris along with Dawson. These are two pretty good blocking wide receivers for them. Real good block. And you've got to be a good blocker on this team because you're not going to get the ball thrown to you that much. They know they're throwing a running offense. Unless you want to put decoy across the front of your jersey all night. Here's Holmes. Look at it. He's got this all time for real. He may have a big touchdown. Can they catch him from behind to the five? He falls in. Touchdown, Georgia Southern. Chad Holmes from 50 yards away takes home his second touchdown of the day. 29 earlier and 50 yards the old-fashioned way. He earns it. And Georgia Southern now comes back to take the lead with seven and a half to go in the game. And you're talking about guys for players of the day? <laughs> Chad Holmes got to be right up there. Wow, what a turn of events again. And now Reed Haley will try to add the extra point. Smith has the hole down, the kick is up, and it is good. So the point after will add another point. That makes it now 21-17, takes it out of a field goal to tie. East Tennessee has to score. Who gets the victory? We're here for you. Well, it's 21-17, Georgia Southern, and look how quickly Holmes clears the line of scrimmage for this score. The surge from this Georgia Southern offensive line was just phenomenal. And Chad Holmes just looks like he's going down, pops out right through through all the bodies that are there in the pile for the big touchdown. And now momentum, people, Georgia Southern's up, the crowd is ready. Gets it with both hands, That's keeps right. the ball from fumbling. <laughs> Must have said something to everybody at halftime, what you think? Well, there you have him. That's a career high, first time over 100 yards. What a big day today. Scoring drive, nine for 94. And the 50 yards by Holmes. Dangerous receiver on the other end by Lindsey. Lindsey out to the 20. Fumble. Fumble is there. Georgia Southern is recovered. East Tennessee shoots themselves in the foot. Gets a run back to the 20, and the fumble recovery comes out, and Eric Thickpin gets the fumble recovery for the Georgia Southern Eagles. To an Eric Thickpin is always around the ball. He's blocked the third quarter punt versus App State. He's blocked the punt versus UTC, recovers one here. What's the return? It really, really starts working out to be a good return, but just good hard pressure and a big hit by 58. Oh, a big strip and a turnover. Big Ben was also one of the guys that got a pretty good hit on him as well and then goes after the loose football. And Eric Big Ben, again, one of those guys that plays a little above his normal God-given talent there here for Georgia Southern. And the handoff to Holmes, not the same magic there. Oh, got an interesting stat here at Georgia Southern. They've had 25 All-Americans for the Eagles, and interesting enough, 12 of those have been walk-ons. And that's the name of the program here at Georgia Southern. They have developed guys that don't necessarily get a chance to play somewhere else or want to play close to home here at jo uh, Georgia Southern. I talked to Tim Stowers about walk-ons a little bit also. Pretty interesting conversation, the fact that he said, you know, we, we don't judge guys. Of course, the just can make can, uh, help our team. We also look at character. We look how hard they work in the classroom and then what they can do, how much they can contribute to the team. Boy, this is a tough blow for East Tennessee with those four turnovers as Robinson rolls his team up as he has it tipped at the line of scrimmage. And I'm not sure who may have got a fingernail on that, but one of the linemen just tipped that ball as it went over the line of scrimmage and just uh, fell short of Dawson, who was the intended receiver on the near side as the clock stops with 6.41, still plenty of time, 21-17, Georgia Southern. 
still plenty of time. Right now you're looking at third and long, third and seven. The thing you want to do for Georgia Southern right now, what I'm thinking is I want, I want possession of the ball. I want to run that clock down because you don't want to put it back into the hands of Greg Ryan and Jeff Johnson, Beatty. Well, they've called a timeout. Georgia Southern wanting to take a timeout and talk it over with their offensive people. Tim Stowers and his quarterback. They've got a lead, 21. Think right. about giving up the day job, huh? All right. That's from reading all those kid books. I see. <laughs> Third down, eight yards to go here for Georgia Southern after calling the timeout. Robinson on the run. There's a flag down, and so is Robinson. Caught from behind and dropped as East Tennessee put the pressure on again, and the backside kind of collapsed around him. Number 90, Richie Johnson, one of the linebackers who has not played a great deal today, comes in from behind and makes the stop. But there's a hole called on Georgia Southern now. You take them a little further back, use up the down. What do you do here for East Tennessee? Good question. Right now, if you're, uh, if you're Georgia Southern, yeah, it's a good question. What do you do? Uh, what do you do? Well, it'll bring up a fourth down play. The line of scrimmage will be the 36. Let's get the call. Holding on the offense. It's declined. It'll be fourth down. Excuse me. It is the 26 rather than the 36. I was almost looking at field goal try, and that's what they're going to try here. And, the, and the, the good thinking from Mike Cavan on that play is that, hey, Reed Haley isn't kicking the ball very well. Reed, Reed Haley's having a bad, he's got a, not having a very good night. His knee hurts him. He pro, let's push him back a little bit further, try to make him hit a long one. He'll probably miss. Let's Four. see what happens with Reed Haley. 43 yard field goal try by Reed Haley. The kick is up. He's got plenty of leg. Is it good? It is. It's good. Reed Haley gets a measure of confidence back with a 43 yard field goal, and now it makes it imperative for East Tennessee to hang on to the football and get a score now as it makes it now 24 to 17. And Haley, despite Whatever. a left knee that is swelling on him, has just kicked a big one. And you see Tim Stowers, one of the first to say thank you. I tell you, Reed Haley, you see him limping off the field, but he must have done something. I mean, I don't know what he's doing, but it doesn't look like that bad knee's affecting him right now, not from the last two kicks. He'll probably, probably, you know, those kickers kind of strange. Probably put a crystal or something like that on there while he's while he waiting to come out, make, it, make the thing well. By the way, this has been a Tom Smith Day, honoring the retired athletic trainer for many years here at Georgia Southern. They rolled out the red carpet for Tom today and simply said thank you. Over the last 23 years, he has been loved by the Eagles, fans, and just about everybody associated with this program. So our congratulations to Tom Smith on Tom Smith Day today at Georgia Southern. There you see it. As again, they go backwards. Interesting stat. Four plays, yeah. minus four yards, <laughs> a minute and four seconds three points <laughs> they do get it in a seven point lead here by the way just a moment to thank Matt Roberts uh, Rogers the sports information director here at Georgia Southern Tim Stowers the coach and David Wagner who of course is the athletic director at Georgia Southern I thanks to all of those folks for the job helping on our broadcast Annabelle Vaughn the sports information director for East Tennessee Mike Cavan the coach and Dr. Janice Shelton the athletic director who we send out a speedy recovery after that foot surgery we hope you get well soon East Tennessee will feel the football and Lindsay who fumbled the last time will take it out of there again. He holds on to it for dear life to the 20. Still trying to fight for yardage which may not be the smartest thing to do in a cluster of people when they're stripping for the ball but he gets it out to around the 22 for East Tennessee and Greg Ryan who has an arsenal of weapons to use that great passing arm and two good receivers to move the ball upfield. Sam you got six minutes and 15 seconds left. You got a high powered offense with a couple of great receivers actually a bevy of great receivers that's plenty of time to come back get the points you need to either tie this thing up send it in overtime or win the game outright ah uh, you mentioned the magic word southern conference we do go to overtime or they can like to go to two for the win i would imagine they try it up if they can get a score ryan throwing near sideline to johnson doubles back and catches it at the 25 marco bradham catches him right there and I think that's becoming a little mono-on-mono uh, mono battle as it has been all day, and now it really intensifies here. And you've got to get some pressure on the quarterback with your defensive line pass rush in order to take the pressure off that defensive secondary because these guys, Beatty, Johnson, these guys are tough to follow. They're, they're tough to stay in the hip pocket. Our thanks also to Elise Steppen, who has been our uh, statistician for today. Thank you very much for the job well done, and certainly all of the men and women behind the scenes at Sports South and our television crew from Creative Production. Here's Ryan Thorne at Johnson's got it at the 40, up to the 42-yard line. Caught from behind by Stockton for one. Also doubling back was the middle linebacker, Paul uh, Carroll, who made the stop number 43 as well. 
Just a great pass play they've been doing all day, and they're going to Johnson again. This guy's got great moves because he doesn't mind crossing the, crossing the middle of the field. Once again, the play's a little high where he's got to jump off. He's going to have to watch that so he doesn't get uh, knocked in the ribs again. You know, Ryan only at 175 has got a cannon for an arm. You know, it's really, really funny because when I was talking to Mike Kevin, he's like, he's talking about Ryan. Well, you know, he's not a real good looking kid he's, as far as his body goes. Doesn't look like a real big time athlete. He just knows where to put the ball. Edwards muscling for yardage out beyond the 45, using a lot of time here, but still five minutes to go. The center, Chris Gentry, being restrained by one of the officials as you can tell the war is intensifying. How intense is it in the in the trenches? I feel right now, when the game's either yours or it's going to turn, it gets bloody. It gets ugly down there. <laughs> These guys are doing everything they can, everything they can. Um, if, if your hand goes in that someone else's face mask, it belongs to them. Aha. Ooh, that's Keep it out. nasty. Keep it out. From Georgia Tech to the Colts to the Falcons, they're not working with us. As Ryan runs out of the pocket, good strike as he once again getting the release valve, and that's Robert Robinson who is building in for Chris Beatty. They'll also use Beatty along with Johnson and now Robinson as they'll triple up on him. And they'll flare either Dixon or Edwards out of that backfield. So they've got a lot of weapons, but now they've got a third down and need about one, one and a half yards for a first down for East Tennessee to keep this drive alive and a chance to either tie or win the game today. Let's see if we go back to Brian Edwards. This has been a nice football game today. It's been a great a lot of, football some game. mistakes, but uh, obviously they're really hard fighting each other. Straight ahead, Ryan got that good penetration. As a matter of fact, the linebackers really kind of split right inside the gap, and Ryan just kind of hesitated and waited for the block. Slipped right by. And, you know, a lot of times in these short down situations, especially in a heated game like this, where emotions are running high, you start to overcommit, and you're just trying to hit somebody really, really hard instead of watch and really hit the right guy. Watch, watch the linebackers here for Georgia Southern. Really time it right here. Paul Carroll coming through and literally just runs right by Ryan. First down for East Tennessee, 4.15 to go in the game. They trail it 24-17. In the pocket, Ryan over the middle, complete again to Beatty. And Beatty's got a gain of six on the play. It'll be second down and four. Linebackers having to drop into that short drop area. Carroll was the one that made the stop. Standing over him was Davis. Had he been needed, he was not, and it's a second down play for East Tennessee. You got a feeling the little underneath is going to set up a little fly pattern here just any moment, either the Johnson, Beatty, or others. Well, that's what's dangerous about this is that if you start watching, and now they're blitzing their linebackers, there's going to be some patterns of them You're going man to man coverage. Three and a half minutes to go. Ryan over the middle. Beatty, oh, made the catch and then paid the price and lost it. His thick pin really nailed him, and now Beatty is down again, and he has paid the price today. So what, we we're talking about that crossing pattern, how these guys have got the courage to cross the middle and still come down with the ball. I think you're going to watch, uh, was it Rob Stock Stockton? Thick uh, Thickpin, Thickpin, yeah. Oh, with the big hit. Training staff of both sides have been rather active today. Whenever you cross the middle like this. Oh, my. It, whenever you cross the middle oh. like that, they're going to make you pay rent. Mm. No hey. amount of uh, pad or protection will save you on that one. No. This, Beatty this, knew he was going to take the shot, tried to brace, but not for that. Straight up, Sam, this is a tough sport. This is a tough sport. He's up and all right, and that's good. Give Chris Beatty a high five for getting up. Yeah. Third down, still about four and a half to five. As Beatty was, well, he almost looked like a pretzel at one time as well as they bent him around. By the way, they in, had some people in inducted into their Hall of Fame here at Georgia Southern. Tim Foley, remember that, is a Tim great Foley, kicker great here. Kicker. Steve Ford from their golf team. Gerald Harris, another football player. Eric Hightower from the basketball. Chuck Lusted from uh, baseball. And a couple of tennis players and ladies we'll mention in a moment after this play on the third down. Here's Ryan to Johnson. He got it right enough for the first down. Then is thrown back, but they give him enough for the first down as they move the ball back out inside the 40 to around the 37 and a half and if the spot stands up it'll be enough for the first down and they get it for East Tennessee and the drive stays alive the two tennis players ladies that were inducted today include uh, Megan McCurry Ferguson and Marsha Fountain Tootle and our congratulations to all of the Hall of Famers here at Georgia Southern congratulations to all of them. that's a great honor nice honor there for East Tennessee to tack on another first down and on a first and 10 with 3-0-3 to play. Will the last team that scores win? Ryan hit as he lets it go. 
Pressure finally got on top of him, and getting all over him was D.T. Tanner out of Atlanta McNair High School. If you look at Georgia Southern's defense, they've changed up a little bit. They got three men, three defensive linemen, one over the center, two, the other two guys over the defensive ta uh, offensive tackles, and they're bringing somebody almost every play, almost a linebacker or a strong safety almost every play, trying to make the blitz and disrupt uh, the throwing timing we were talking about earlier, and it's happening now. Three down linemen are Morris, Sellers, and Thomas. 91, 53, and 97. And you can see they're in that same formation and jumping off on the outside is Morris. He claims he was drawn off. There's a flag down on this second and 10 yards to go. It does stop the clock with 2.57 left to play in the game. And they're saying that Brett Dotson uh, you know, can't move before he went across the line. Looking at the numbers on uh, Jeff Johnson, by the way, he has 10 catches for 114 yards today. That gives him 113 for his career, too shy of tying the all-time reception record for East Tennessee. But you have a feeling if they're going to win this game, he's got to catch at least three or four more catches here. I'll tell you what, and to break a record like that and have that kind of honor bestowed upon the you. The defensive player come into the neutral zone. Offensive player move. There's no flag on the play. Reset. So pick up the penalties. Pick up the flags. Do it again. Stuff them in your pocket. Here with Jeff Johnson, you know we'd like to take that type of... Uh, that type of recognition home with a win yep. as opposed to a loss. We're waiting to see if Beatty comes back out. He does to the bottom of your screen there along with Johnson. So they got their dynamic duo to the bottom side or to the left side of Ryan who comes out of the shotgun. Time for him to throw. Plenty of time. He winds up and throws. He's throwing underneath. It's going to be a catch. Yes, at the 10-yard line. So East Tennessee comes up with another great catch by Robert Robinson. And Robinson, the senior out of Decatur, Georgia, makes the catch maybe of the evening for East Tennessee and sets up a first and goal to go. The great thing about this play is that when Ryan rolls out of the pocket, Robinson adjusts. He adjusts. He comes over, finds the open ground, comes up with a big play. Boy, Williams is just kind of patting himself on the helmet saying, why did I ever let him double back to help out the quarterback? 17 yards on the pass and run, and now a first and goal to go with 2.32 to play for East Tennessee. A touchdown will not do it. They'll have to make the decision for the tie or two if they make it, and Edwards is going to be stopped for a loss of two. And now East Tennessee may start starting to stop the clock, and they finally do. So East Tennessee will stop the clock with 2.17 to play. And again, that time, the defense of Georgia Southern bent were, they were outside. I said, Paul, watch Paul Carroll scrape off the outside here, nice. doing exactly what a linebacker is supposed to do. And also his defensive line doing exactly what they're supposed to do, hold their man up, hold their men up so he can get outside and make that tackle behind the line of scrimmage. You know, we're mobility on both sides. Appalachian State very disappointed that, of course, they lost here on the field goal right. and took them out of a chance of taking over the lead in the conference. But now... They've got a little redemption, and everybody in the league, Marshall's going to have to live with this. Everybody in the league is pulling for Appalachian State tonight. Every, you know that. Everybody. Well, you know, everybody <laughs> loves an underdog. Two minutes and 17 seconds to go in this baby. Second down and 12. Second and go. They're throwing to the end zone, and it's going to be intercepted by Williams. with an intercept for Georgia Southern in the end zone. And the defense out of a serpent from the night has reared their head and throws East Tennessee back. We've been talking about timing patterns all day long, Sam, and here's one right here. Quarterback drops back, throws it up to Jeff Johnson, of course. And there's Francis Williams to take the pick and probably save the day. What a great interception. What a timely interception. What a big, big play for Francis Williams. Look who was also there. Thick pin who had been around the football all afternoon, despite the fact that Rob Stockton is a fine, strong safety. Thick pin was back there, but Williams, third leading tacker on the team, comes up with a big intercept, and that one could be the backbreaker. He's playing that left corner because Derek Austin is out with a torn rotator cuff of the shoulder. Now they're going to try to keep it on the ground, and it's going to be Robinson. East Tennessee will try to stop the clock again with 2.06 to play. And a gain of only a yard of the play for a second down and nine yards to go as Mike Cabin trying to nurse the clock and hoping his defense can give him one more shot at the victory today. And here's the longest two minutes in football coming up. <laughs> You get, if you're Georgia Southern right now, what you've got to do is you've got to control the ball because this is a big-time offense that they're playing against. They can score points in 20 seconds, in 30 seconds. 
you've got to be able to move the ball, at least keep control of the clock and, and get it downfield a little bit and take them out of range of, of quick striking distance. Well, these teams haven't played a lot. They played only four times, so they'll break a tie at 2-2 coming into today's game. Johnson City has been the side of three of the games, and as a matter of fact, uh, East Tennessee has won uh, both of them at East Tennessee, while Georgia Southern has won one here and the other one last year. 31-24, which wrapped up outright the Southern Conference Championship. 31-24, last second heroics by uh, Ryan and uh, Jeff Johnson. And again, they catch it out of the back of the end zone. Let's go downstairs, Joe Pequeno. Joe, good game today. Great game, Sam. And uh, on that last timeout, Tommy Spanger told his linebackers to watch for the quick slants. He also told his cornerbacks to watch the flares in the end zone. They prepared. Francis Williams was there. Big interception. Now let's see what Southern can do with the ball in the last two minutes of the ball game. Sam. Thank you very much. Virginia 35, North Carolina 10 in the fourth period. And now Alabama has scored on Mississippi. It's 10 to 7. And they are playing uh, at Alabama. Here is Robinson trying to roll out. Again, he can't make much room. And East Tennessee, let's see if they use up another first down. They are, excuse me, a timeout with a minute 55. They're trying to, I believe, preserve the last one, which is, I believe, the last one they've got. And it brings up a third down play as Georgia Southern will nurse down the play clock down to the full 25 as Tim Stowers is looking, waiting to send in the play. They finally single it in. And Robinson gets the message and now overlooks the defense. He's got only 10 seconds to bring his team up. And trying to use up as much of that clock as he can. Play clock is down to three, two. They just get it off. Hand off, up the middle. Chad Holmes. And I got a feeling the way this game is going, that's my MVP today. Chad Holmes with the two touchdowns has had himself quite a day today. He has had a big day to go from third team to starter, yeah. turning this kind of performance for his team. He's got to be very, very proud of himself. Now, now East Tennessee has now taken their final timeout as they stop the clock on this fourth down play as Mike Cavan tries to look at all of his options on this punt situation. He will get one last opportunity, and he's got plenty of time at a minute 17. Last team to score wins. So plenty of time. You got to realize, you know, if, if they get the ball down there, if they score and time runs out, they still get to come back and try for mm -hmm. the, either the extra point or the two-point conversion, tie it up or go for the win. Uh, there's a, there is really a lot of time left here, and it's not over. That's really that's really why where Georgia Southern failed a little bit on that last drive is they try, they should have really try to get something going there, I, and I know they did, but losing the ball like that, not having time of possession, not getting that first down, really critical. Well, Don't forget, Eric, la and now last year, they, they threw, a, th threw a Hail Mary pass down here in the end zone, just barely lost it, right? right. Lightning going to strike twice? I don't know. Johnson has averaged uh, about eight yards per return on the punch. You may recall he had a big, crucial fumble that was recovered by East Tennessee. So he's almost darned if he does and darned if he doesn't feel one of these because they need a big run back here. And Eric Smith kicking it right to Johnson. He watches it bound. He feels it on one hop, takes it to the outside. He fumbles, but the ball goes out of bounds. The officials are there. The signal is going to go to East Tennessee. Boy, I want to tell you, East Tennessee and their kicking game or return thereof has been really scary today. I'll tell you, though, Jeff Johnson, he, he is a big playmaker. He's the kind of guy that if he gets the ball, bounces down, comes up to his arms, if he gets the ball, he's going to try to make something happen. That's really the sign of, of, a, of a guy who's, who's trying, of a big league player. Look how close this was of staying in bounds. And it finally hops out of bounds. Uh, that could have been up for grabs. And Georgia Southern was that all was around it. Close. Johnson, along with Beatty, come to the wide side left of Greg Ryan. The crowd, some 16,000 will be kicked off. What's remaining on their feet? Ryan dumps it underneath. They get it on the little swing pass to the outside. Get it out to Brian Edwards, who takes it just shy of a first down, but out of bounds to stop the clock with 59 seconds to go in the game. Very heads and we've got an offensive lineman down. And that appears to be a big number 66, who would be Dotson, Brett Dotson from Rutherford, Rutherford, North Carolina. All 6'6", 275 of him down, and writhing in pain as they're now looking at that right leg. Over here, it'll be a first down after 15 yards. Oh, a personal foul. A personal foul. Yeah, a personal foul on Georgia Southern. I wonder if that, I wonder if that was a result of the injury. You hate, you hate seeing guys get hurt like this. Here's a great ball player who's been fighting all night long, really in, in the thick of things. 
get hurt here in the last, really the last 59 seconds of the game. You hate seeing that happen, especially if it comes from a personal foul or something like that. As they look at the fallen uh, player in the first half, of course, it came to a 9-6 score. And uh, that resulted in a lead by the 9-7 uh, uh, nine, nine score, excuse me, at the end of the first half. Seven points on the board after the touchdown run of 12 yards by Marlo Wortham. A kick after by Haley was good. 7-0 Georgia Southern. Then a 12-yard pass from Ryan to Dixon. The kick after was no good. And it was 7-6 at the end of the period. Then a 46-yard play on the field goal by Mike Lafferty. Going 5-for-5 five five on the field goal. It was 9-7 at the half for East Tennessee. Third period. Chad Holmes bust for 29 for Georgia Southern. Kick after good. They led 14-9. An 11-yard run by Edwards for East Tennessee. They took the lead back, 17-14. And they came back with a 50-yard run by Holmes. Makes it 21-17. And now the 43-yard uh, field goal by Reed Haley. 24-17 is our score. As East Tennessee after the penalty. And Dotson has been taken off the field. Replaced by David Sutton. Sutton, a redshirt freshman, number 73. And Ryan's in the pocket. Back to throw on first down. The pocket breaks down. He tries to duck it off, and let's see if they're going to call it uh, intentional grounding. No. They say they had a man on the flare out, and that was Edwards trying to get out to the flat. So a big break there for East Tennessee. No, they're going to rule him down now. Excuse me. And where'd the pressure come from? Where'd the pressure come from? From the right side of the offensive line where they just lost Dodson. They replaced him with David Sutton. Again, they have taken it back to the line of scrimmage, so they did rule. And he was throwing to a man in the flat here. And he was there. Yeah, the man was there. Edwards was definitely in the area. Second down, 10 yards to go. 52 seconds to go. East Tennessee trailing Georgia Southern 24-17 on the Southern Conference Game of the Week. And there's still more to come tonight. Marshall and Appalachian State. Ryan, he's throwing for it all. He's got Johnson in the end zone. Touchdown! East Tennessee scores! They make it 24-23, and now the point after to tie it, two points to win. 50, 45 seconds to go. There is an overtime rule in the Southern Conference, and we may see it here. Here's the play. Here's the play. Greg Ryan has all day to throw this ball. Fantastic blocking by his offensive line. And there he is, number one, Jeff Johnson. Francis Williams doing his best to stay in his hip pocket. But you know, we were talking a minute ago about how quick this offense can strike. That personal foul that moved him up upfield here, put him in scoring distance, and you just saw it happen. Lightning, ju lightning jumps up and bites him. Now Georgia Southern is going to take a timeout as the offense is still on the field. East Tennessee is going for two points and the victory, and not the tie for the overtime. What a gutty call by Mike Cabin. However, he has time. Now to rethink the situation. Right. Was it a slap knee reaction that he put the two out, or has he got confidence these guys can do it? I'll tell you what, he's got the weapons. You just saw me. He just scored in the last 50 seconds. 23-24. Wow. This, this is a tight ball. Good Southern Conference football. Tonight. Excellent game. Georgia Southern leading by a point. Let's take a look again. And I tell you, Ryan aired this baby out. Watch the protection, Sam, all day long. Offensive line doing a great job. He just hurls it up in the air. And number one, been there all night long for him. Williams, who had been so effective in the end zone, and this time, just unlike last year when Jeff Johnson ran out of the back of the end zone on a last-second throw by East Tennessee, he had plenty of time to get the feet down and another angle. And you can see how well that ball is thrown. Over the top, Williams had no chance to knock it away. And here comes the offensive unit again as they go in only three plays, 55 yards, 21 seconds, 32 yards on the pass and run. Ryan to Johnson. Georgia Southern opponents, one of two on two-point conversions so far this year. So East Tennessee is going to light up and go for a two-point conversion here to see if they can get it done. I was checking to see if they got on two-point conversions. They did one already. They actually, on two-point conversions, are three for three this year. So they're lining up for the victory. Back is Ryan in the pocket. Pumps one. It's knocked down. Line of scrimmage, Michael Morris, I believe number 91, knocks it down at the line of scrimmage. And as Ryan's throwing to a flooded right side of the end zone for the two-point conversion, East Tennessee is down by a point with 45 seconds to go. And you can see the despair 
on Mike uh, Fredenberg. And look at the big play here made by, again, Michael Morris, number 91. And they teach it when you're playing defensive line. Push back, push back, and then get your hands up. Michael Morris does a great job. Close, he closed that passing lane of Greg Ryan, got the slap down. And I tell you what, broken hearts on the East Tennessee side. Keep in mind, though, one of the scariest plays in all of football, the dreaded onside kick will now be coming. Well, there you have uh, Bradham. That's Chad Niebuhr, rumor he got, the, uh, he got a uh, UT Chattanooga, I believe. Now uh, Georgia, outside, Georgia Southern's going to call back. a timeout to talk it over here. And again, they're trying to get their All-State team in there. The guys with the good hands, I guess, huh? That's right, All-State, that's right. The guys who catch the ball in the squib. And they've had an onside kick. Uh, take, the, the, the Georgia Southern has gotten taken back for a touchdown. Corey Collins, the punter, is trying to really figure out which hash mark he wants to kick it from. Now he goes to the far hash mark, as you see Tim Stowers and their special teams people meeting down below us. And again, Coach Towers, Coach Cavan, their fine staff, Sports Information Department, and all of the people. Again, our thanks for making it a very enjoyable trip every time we go around the Southern Conference. Got some great games still to come, as a matter of fact, before we're through this year. And, we, of course, will be following you. By the way, let me give a little plug, if I may, as well. The Southern Conference this year has initiated a radio show, as you see the scores, with Western Carolina coming up with a victory. Army by one over the Citadel. And, of course, Furman came up with a 28-11 to 11 win over VMI and the other score. But Southern Conference has a call-in radio show with a lot of guests on Monday nights heard on many of the radio stations around the Southern Conference cities. Hey, who hosts that show, I Sam? I think a guy by the name of uh, Schmidt holds that thing. No, Sam, that's Sam Schmidt. Schmidt. <laughs> Sam Schmidt, that's it. We'll be on the air at 7 o'clock. Big lineup as we've now shifted gears from not only just football but basketball as well on Monday night. So consult your local radio listings for the Southern Conference this week in the Southern Conference show. Well, onside kick. And now Collins, after going from the hash mark on the far side, comes to the hash mark on the near side. So Georgia Southern flip-flops their hands team to the other side. Sam, what would make this game more exciting than it's already been? An onside kick that's, that's received or retrieved by East Tennessee State, and they get another chance at getting a touchdown. Well, here, oh, he kicks it the wrong way. And for East Tennessee, that is going to do it as Tim Stowers and his team says, let's take over right there. So the onside kick goes backwards from Collins. He does not get the number he wanted with 45 seconds. And again, the clock the, would not run until somebody touched it. Nobody did. Nobody touched it. And Georgia Southern has a chance to maybe even put on a score here, which would be certainly unfortunate to how close this game has been. But nonetheless, if you've got the score, you take it. If Georgia Southern comes out running play, you'll definitely see East Tennessee State come out trying to strip the ball and yeah. cause the big fumble. Now keep in mind, East Tennessee is out of timeouts. And of course, this has been a big night for several, but none bigger than Chad Holmes, who is lining up right behind the quarterback, Kenny Robinson, and they are not going to run any plays, not take any chances as they fall down with a football. And his homes and others protect him. Let's send out our congratulations for our first union player of the game. And what a game he's had. There you see him from Griffin, Georgia, 5'10", 202, a third string fullback stepping up big time. Chad Holmes, over 140 yards rushing today. Our congratulations from first union and the Southern Conference for our player of the game. And there's the numbers there on him with a couple of TDs. Big day, a Cinderella story, if you will. Clack is rolling at 15, 14. Robinson goes down for the last play of this game. Georgia Southern night. goes one way. And the other side is East Tennessee. Been good game today all around. Thanks, Sam. Good day. It was a great game. Another, this is the level of play of Southern Conference football. Well, Southern Conference will continue next week as Tim Stowers and Mike Cavan will head to the center of the field for another day. You can see smiles around as Mike Cavan again took the gamble and went for two. Went for two to win. They got it blocked at the line of scrimmage, and they lose it by the score of 24 to 23. This is Sam Smith, Joe Paquino, and Ben Hutt saying so long, everybody, from Statesboro.